Click, buy, deliver. With remote purchasing from the two-time Motorcycle News Dealer of the Year, Colchester Kawasaki. Proud sponsors of Chasing the Racing. Three, two, one, and welcome back to Chasing the Racing, episode 130, and we're delighted to be joined by Christian Eden. First of all, congratulations on the on uh, putting a ring on it recently. <laughs> of, uh, it was a lovely do, and uh, obviously it's officially welcome to the to the northeast. Uh, like, well, it's like married in the northeast family. Isn't it? Yeah, you've got me now. Um, yeah, we had a, a mega wedding. Um, <clears throat> that's hard doing outside of. Well, it's been redone twice because of COVID, and then. Trying to organise it outside of a race season's hard as well. So, yeah, it was just after the last round and we got Mint Weather, had a great day, flipping loads of cool people, mega party. I got absolutely... Good dancing. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see my dancing? It was stopped <laughs> from when I walked in until I left. <laughs> I checked my watch the day after and from half eight at night until midnight, I did 35,000 steps. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, like, that is some savage like, dancing that mine 100 i had a few people thought i was on some gear because like i mean i'm the person who's never touched a single drug in my life like i absolutely what's it but i'm just a happy drunk so like but i'm do you know what i don't drink very much but i'm a happy drunk and i, I also know when to stop so i'm really good at getting to a point and then stopping so people who've never seen me like that like most of the team were there and obviously see me as like a really straight cut sort of like Affed. Don't say a lot, really <laughs> introverted, like there was me <laughs> dancing around like an idiot. I, because it was my own wedding, I did keep my clothes on because sometimes that <laughs> does go the wrong way. I have got a tendency to get a bit naked. I, t- I tell you what, I don't know how that conversation came about now. It feel, it feels like a blur, but like before the show started, we were talking about, oh, do you, like, do you go out for a few drinks and stuff like that? And at begin with, you actually went, yeah, I'll probably save it up for like once every two years. I fully understand now why <laughs> yeah. you save it for two years. You know, like some flash nudity here. Yeah, there we go. It's got to be done. But I t- I've got to ask the first question that evening uh, like everyone would be asking you how much did the wedding cost you then do you know what <laughs> <laughs> it's not cheap is it Every, everything that you do it's like price plus a bit <laughs> Time, you know, times a bit I yeah think. you know it's like <clears throat> you, you know when you go to bsb and you have a bsb burger it's the same as any other burger about four quid more <laughs> it's like that but even worse it's a wedding burger which mm-hmm. is like 10 times more so you're like oh you're just gonna yeah we'll feed our guests a little bit oh it's 50 quid ahead what you're like, 50, oh yeah. Was it actually 50 quid a head? Like, it was, I, mean, I think something like that. I, didn't, I wasn't sweat. fully involved in the, the ins and outs, but you know, like it, it you know, it adds up quite quickly. My, my God, because I was about to say, because you were, you were discussing where the venue was up in North East here. And yeah. You were saying like, you had to get a venue big enough to host all your, all your friends. How many people were you at? You went we had We had in the daytime, <clears throat> we were trying to keep it low key as much as we could, but it does, it, now these things grow, don't they? It's hard. Of course so they do. In the daytime, we had 102 people, I think, for the for the day and the meals. And then in the night, I think we had 180, 190 people. So it, it kicked off big time. It was a proper party. Like it was. Fair play. I mean, like, <clears throat> Nicola did almost all of the organization. I had very little involvement in it. Um, but she's got. Um, She's done a couple of balls for like the MND Association, which she has a, an involvement with. All oh, right. So she knows how to put on a party. So we had, like, honestly, like we had, um, we had a singer, we had uh, a band, we had a DJ, we had a saxophonist who was absolutely mint. You know, like it was like a mini Glastonbury <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on Hadrian's Wall. Basically, it was, it was a proper do. Like it was, it, I really enjoyed the day. I, she had a horse. I think she did. She had a horse at some point. I've seen pictures afterwards. Yeah, uh, it was it. Was that on the wedding day? Yeah, but, yeah. So she wanted the horse to be involved. So um, she keeps her horse just literally a stone's throw away from where the church is. So one of her mates came and brought the horse down. You tempted not to have your Ducati there as well. And, uh, do you know what? I had that. We'd had a conversation about getting the race bike down, um, <laughs> but I think they were still fixing it after I'd got rear-ended the week before. So I, ah, I never fair. got to get it down. I would have quite liked to have ridden it from there up to the up to the venue because mm. the church and the venue are in different places so it yeah. would have been quite nice to have ridden it up there but do you yeah. have your right like a road license i've got a road license yeah, yeah. i've got a road license. yeah but I don't, I don't i don't ride on the road though i've never apart from doing my test i've never ridden on the road so why why did you go down the test avenue then because someone said they'd do it me for free and <laughs> so like you, a freebie. Whole, you corporate whore no good man. i just because i thought it's a good thing to have at the, yeah. t- at the time i knew i wasn't going to use it at the time but so, once you've got it you've got it haven't you so i was like oh 
Yeah, I'll do it. And oh, the one time you're going to use it on the Wednesday know, and the bike's knackered. Damn we'll, it. We will uh, sort of run through the season in, in order, but obviously you've just mentioned that crash at Brands. And I bet after after Nicolo delayed the wedding twice with COVID, and then I bet when she was watching that race live and she's seen you go backwards, oh, like you must have been about 12 foot in the air backwards at like 100 miles an hour. And obviously, with it go downhill as well, it's mm-hmm. like it's even a bigger drop. And then somersaulting backwards into the barrier, followed by your bike. I bet you thought like it might be getting delayed again. Like <laughs> honestly, that's that's the biggest crash I've ever had in terms of like magnitude of a crash. Mm. Um, Jesus! Like last lap of the last race of the series, you know, like it, long and short of it's how I feel like my championship's gone. But you know, like you tipping into podium position. Tip into the first corner on the last lap. And then next thing I knew, I was like up in the air, upside down. And you boys know what it's like. I was up in the air, upside down. I had time to think like, oh, man. <laughs> and I was still thinking it. And then I'm thinking, I'm still thinking it and I've not hit the ground yet. You know, like it was, everything goes slow motion, doesn't it? And it was just <laughs> massive. And I waited for the, <laughs> the thud. The bigger the crash, the slower it goes. Oh, yeah. It? And fine. I waited for the thud and it just, but I think what was worse about it is because <clears throat> You boys know what it's like when you when you have a crash and you can almost manage a crash. You almost get good at crashing. Not that you want to get good at crashing, but you can sort of, you know what's coming. You prepare yourself. Yeah. You know, you start to lose the front or you start to lose the rear and you know what's sort of coming next. That one, I just got T-boned from behind. And then literally the first thing I knew was like my the back end had locked solid. And then I was just, first yep. one. 45 minutes in. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, now I was just upside down. Now I was just yeah. Quite honestly, like that was it, it. It is horrendous. I'll I'll get my sister to put like a little clip in so people can. Yeah, well, it wasn't it wasn't shown fully on TV, but they showed the onboards afterwards. I put some of the stills up on my socials. Yeah, I've seen that on Instagram. And for for people Jesus. that have like say done a track day or club racing at Brands Hatch, Paddock Hill Bend's one of the scariest corners to like sort of get to. In terms of your first lap around any track, I would say Paddock Hill Bend's up there with one of the uh, scariest ones. I actually know someone that actually t- did a shit in the leathers the first time they went down Paddock Hill Bend. So just to give it some context, right? I, I won't name and shame it, but I do know somebody. Like, oh, have, you, have, you ever shame, done, have you ever done that? Like, no. no. I in, in your leathers? Oh, yeah, in my yourself. leathers. Yeah. Have you? Yeah. When? And that's what uh, it takes, kids, to be British <laughs> front runner. That's what it takes. Uh, Donington Park. Uh, when I was on the Tyco BMW uh, qualifying. <clears throat> Out of had... nerves or you just had to go and you didn't have time? No, no, because I hit the ground that hard. And, uh, I, and I popped a plop out. Really? <laughs> <Yeah>. Jesus, <Jeez, it's laughs> man. But I didn't know, so this is the worst thing. So I had a massive... It was in qualifying. I remember Hector Barber, who's the world's worst caravan, was trying to get a tow. And he, he proper annoyed me. So I like I slowed up. Oh, honestly, he just hitches on, puts his flipping special cable on, away you go. Do you know what? He's that daft, right? He gets a toe. <laughs> he gets a toe. And then he's, because he's really fast, he then passes you and then forgets that he was actually trying to get a toe. And then, so he passes you on a qualifying lap going really fast and then gets lost and <laughs> slows right up. He's an absolute dingbat. Anyway. Yeah. So, I, so he got him away. So I was completely offline, and I don't know what happened, but I was just offline on the inside, coming onto the back straight at Donington, and it just flipping pinged me up in the air, slapped me down. It's the first time I'd used the airbag suit, or the first time that I'd had to use the airbag suit. Went off, big old hit. I was glad of the airbag, sort of trudged off, <clears throat> and that was fine. And then actually the Alpine Stars guy was there that weekend. So I went back to the caravan, and he's like, oh, yeah, the airbag. I said, yeah, the airbag's mint, and this, that, and the other. And you know, you're like... <sighs> Sat in the caravan. It's a small area, isn't it? You know, there's like three or four of us in there. <sighs> Something's a bit... <laughs> this, this airbag's a bit smelly. <laughs> no, son. And I was sat there, you know, like you sort of take your leathers half down, don't you? So I was half out my leathers, but still sat in it. And it didn't feel any squidge or anything. But, you know, like you just kept getting a whiff of something a bit wrong. <laughs> So but I've, I stayed in my kit for about an hour afterwards, having a cup of tea and all my stuff. At what point did you start judging other people in the caravan? Going, well, you just think there's something going. Well. You think oh, it wasn't. Yeah, till I got properly changed, I realised what had happened. Do you know this? 
<laughs> so going back to Paddy Kilburn, yeah, it's, it's, as, as you approach it. Someone made that like totally classy. Like, yeah, it just, just happened. Like, and we're just both sitting here going, fair enough, mate. <laughs> like, he literally shot himself. As, as, as you approach, you, oh, you, God, along the start, finish straight on a super bike, you'll be doing about 170. And then just as you get over the line, hard on the brakes, and you, you can't see where you're going. It's just completely blind. You've kind of got your reference point, so you know where to be. But the actual track, you can't see. You just you know that you're going to be going downhill steep. And so as you're tipping in there to get to get rear-ended and then go flying up in the air backwards, going back into the gravel, it's like, yeah. Uh, Injuries-wise, did you... I, I presume you must have been knocked out or something, were you? No, I wasn't. Um, really weird one, actually, because I, I felt really groggy. Um, <clears throat> I remember all of it. I wasn't knocked out. Definitely wasn't knocked out. There's no uh, proper impact marks to my helmet. There's a bit, a bit of gravel touch mm-hmm. but nothing major because it was like um a really important helmet to me so i was glad it wasn't marked uh, why is that then sorry oh it's just uh my granddad had passed away and it was just one that i had another one done just with all these little bits on it yeah. so it was just like just as you have different i all my helmets are different designs and that one was just like this most special one this year so because the like uh, paint nation do your list. yeah so, yeah, yeah. yeah. I saw that on social media. Yeah. What a, yeah, that is. It was, and yeah. it was a real nice job. I mean, Paint, yeah. Paint Nation does some mint ones, but that one was a bit, bit Pers- more special as well. Um, so yeah, never never touched my head, but I was been super groggy from it, and I I, I rung my bell without ringing my bell. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm still struggling a little bit with my neck, not struggling, but yeah, I can feel that it doesn't turn the same as it did. I'm just, I think it's just like a bit of a whiplash type thing. Jesus, mm-hmm. well, because how? how... <clears throat> Bloody hell, feels like forever ago since we were last on it's a month bike ago, bikes. Isn't it, I think just yeah. over. I mean, I, I broke, I broke me a bone in my hand, but nothing major, nothing. I proper got away with it, like hundred percent got away with it. Jesus, what? Div, um, bit of a random one, but are you, do you have uh, insurance for crashes or not, like brakes? No, nah. no, me neither. Now, well, no, I do. I have it for brakes, and I've but I've looked into getting because uh, that what you want is to be fixed up. That's what you need insurance for. Yeah. Well, like, is in private health care? Yeah. But, like, I've got private health care, but they don't cover me for anything sports-related, so I basically don't have private health care. Really? Yeah, it's a waste of time. Uh-huh. It, yeah. Which I'm I clearly you... found out after I phoned them up, <laughs> yeah. having paying them £1,000 a year for the last 10 years, whatever it is. Right. Gee, well, look... Can you walk... Literally, right, I've brought me hand. How have you done it? Sport injury. Oh, Sorry, Miss Aiden. Um, yeah, pretty you're much. Not, you're not getting any of your money yeah, back. Yeah, pretty much. So a part of hindsight would have been, I fall down, fell down the stairs. Oh, champion, get your cell in. Yeah. I've just fallen down the stairs. I think, Come get I me. think they yeah. still look into it. Because like, when, do- when you say, <laughs> I fell down the stairs, and they go, injury report, brands hatch, and this sort of, which set of stairs did you fall down? Bloody uh, hell. The ones that it- parked for me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, got pushed. Yeah. <laughs> Very fast. No, I think, I think they look into it pretty good. So, do but when you think I, of... I think it's quite hard to get sporting insurances. Yeah. It, it... Well, do you know when you think of private healthcare insurance? Like, I, I haven't really looked into it and, like, the prices for it. But do you know if you um, if you get the whole budget of the NHS and divide it up by the number of people in the oh, country... we're going to get deep it's, here. This is going to go it's off. Great, it, it, it costs... Uh, it I costs completely ev- agree with you, right, what you're about to say. It costs but... everyone... I think it's about three and a half thousand pounds mm-hmm. but the kids like every single person three and a half grand but there's a stat where something like you you, you um you get you, you abuse something like 90 percent in the last like one percent of your life or two percent of your All life right. so you're, you're paying like <clears throat> so every year you know like by the time you're t- 10 year old you've paid like say 30 or 35 grand yeah. in it's, uh, you haven't do you know what i mean you haven't paid mm-hmm. but like your sort of share but then Obviously, if you get cancer in the last few years of your life, they'll spend hundreds of thousands on you. So it's like, but yeah, it's, in terms of p- private healthcare, if you were going to pay it, if it's got to be like a few grand. I, I've never looked into it, but I presume it would be like a good few grand a year. But being a bit political, I do think like if you decided I'm going to go, I'm going to pay for private healthcare and not pay me taxes that go towards mm. national healthcare. Mm-hmm. Like, would you be better off than not? Anyway, it's a bit deep, but <laughs> no. But you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Like, how much care would you get? Is they do a great job, like the NHS and stuff. But we're after something that's frowned upon. If you could turn up, you know, like that self in self inflicted in it, you know, like mm. it's a, yeah, it's and a... you want to get seen quickly, and you want different sort of. You don't want it. You're not like ninety year old Sheila who's had a fall and basically only wants to be able to sit back in a chair and read a paper. You want to be back to optimum 
it's a different sort of and the rehab time you want is quicker so it's a different sort of healthcare that you're after is what i mean yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. i'm sure um if if there was a if like i said it all comes down to the prices but you know i'm sure most people that race bikes would be happy to to pay more a mm-hmm. little bit more but mm-hmm. for that more yeah. specific care um the thing uh, uh healthcare in this country is very much it's very much potluck where you live um from crashing at different tracks in the country i've had like the range of experiences i've had like unbelievable care uh, f- i've had a few operations where like i couldn't if i was paying like, if it was private healthcare mm-hmm. i couldn't have asked for any more than yeah. what I, I got and i've also had like horrendous experiences which is like so yeah it's it very much like look at the draw where you live yeah. really that's yeah, also it? you know like i've <clears throat> i've built a an extension for a, a surgeon and now he gets me in quite quickly you know like it's obviously he's watching the extension like still up and it's fine you know oh, <laughs> works out all right but uh-huh. you know what i mean if you know someone in in you know the right places the right places <laughs> there are there's considerable cues if you can skip it a little bit because you know the dude at the front Mm -hmm. (laughs) makes a difference yeah (laughs) love it have you got like sport I like, used uh, do you know what uh, there's people that come around the paddock and offer the private the health always just before qualifying <laughs> <laughs> honestly there's a there's a fella not naming any names that does the rounds and I swear because I hate qualifying do, do you like qualifying you don't mind it I'm more of a race you, what, I'm, I'm what a Sunday like man don't? really I'm, no I'm not a qualifier definitely so not I'm not a qualifier and I just know that you've just done a day and a half of trying to go as fast as you can you're about to go out and do a 10 minute session where you've got to go even faster by probably about a second you know your balls have been hanging out all weekend now you've got to go and do it even more and round the corner goes have you ever thought what it's like if you crash how are you going to pay your bills i'm like dude Cheers, i'm about man. to put my helmet on to go qualifying i'm probably going to crash but i didn't think about my bills <laughs> why have you done this to me and then he goes in p17 or something yeah i wouldn't i wonder if it's one of the other teams just going can you do us a favor yeah. put that act on again and just go have a word with it but the there corner. definitely is a guy that is, oh, definitely picks his moments well, incredibly the, I've, well i have heard some right horror stories about that though now that's what a healthcare i want to know that you know like basically i know lads who have taken out policies you know for the sport yeah. Injury, absolutely spanned themselves and haven't got a penny out of it. Really? Mm. Well, that, now, like I said, like there was I someone say, I'm that, never going to name names, but you think, well, do you know the people right. that come, the, the, 50 quid a month's a lot of money. People that come around the paddock and uh, like offer these deals. I once signed up to one with a company years, uh, like a good few years ago, and I read through the sheets and I just thought they've, they've massively priced this wrong because it was. It was something like fourteen pound a month or fifteen pound a month, but like if you if you like broke a metacarpal, it was fifteen hundred quid. <laughs> if you broke, a, uh, sorry, it was seven fifty. Yeah, but like you can do a few of them at a time, uh, easy. If you broke like a re- a decent bone, it was like um, a decent. I, think, I love it. I'm, like we're all like, yeah, that's not a proper bone. It was like ten like... grand for this. It was like fifteen hundred quid for a dislocation. So I'm thinking fifteen pound a month. You know, that's uh, so. I'll get that back really quickly. Yeah, like that. That's 180, 180 quid a year, yeah. and like you're almost guaranteed to at least do like break a little yeah. bone. So um, I, I did it for like a few years, and like so I, I must have paid like over the couple of years I must have paid about two or three hundred quid in, and I had about five grand back off them. <laughs> and then I got a letter through the door saying your policy is now changing, and they'd put like a pre and I just so I cancelled it. But I just thought like fifteen quid a month's like a bargain. You're like <laughs> <laughs> in this sport, yeah. Take a like a hammer to yourself at the end of the year. <laughs> yeah. It's almost like a paid. wage. You basically took out a wage. <laughs> <laughs> more or less more it's like less. a performance bonus but the other way around exactly yeah <laughs> a, sub- a wooden spoon and you're more committed Subsidy. to it like, Jesus <laughs> went fucking anyway well um, let's go through the season obviously I, w- when was the last time you were on the pod was it before the season started I think it was wasn't it must have been remember. I've been think... on it that many times this is now, like number five isn't it it is number five but I don't think you've been on since the season started I think the last one was like uh, looking into the I season. know we spoke about it last time but when does the retainer start <laughs> Like, is it number five or six? Like, we'll say uh, from uh, episode seven. <laughs> Don't put numbers into it. You hold us to it, man. You know what I mean? It'll be literally like that. Gone. We we need it all back. Wait, just pay him. Just get it paid. Just get it paid. But, um, yeah. So going into the season, um, the 
so for, was it you finished third last year didn't you the year yeah. before yeah. yeah and so good pre-season and everything and proper hit the ground running mm-hmm. pre-season testing first few rounds you're like it was basically you and Jason wasn't it mm-hmm. first round of, let's go from the first round at Alton uh, you led like nearly all the laps and just oh, got pipped God. pipped in every Three race times. Didn't you? I know I yeah. listened to Jason's pod going oh god <laughs> he was uh, so happy wasn't he yeah he was like he was, <laughs> <laughs> he was on fire at the end of the season <laughs> He was on, uh, on fire at the beginning of the season. Yeah, he was he, amazing. Like, the, used two amazing. Were, used two were like the the cream, but then he he was just had that like creamier. Yeah, creamier. <laughs> he had the whipped cream on top. Really. Can, you, can you describe his performance? Yeah, creamier. <laughs> but you must, right, yeah. you must have been happy with the start of the season, like. Yeah, honestly, like we'd gone through preseason, we hadn't, we didn't have anything new for the bike. I don't think many people did because of obviously everything that was going on. So it wasn't many development bits or anything. We had exactly the same stuff. Um, <clears throat> the only thing that changed for me was we put a different link in and it just really changed not how quick I could go but just how constant I could be with it um, so all through pre-season I knew I was in a good place which was kind of odd because I was never really super quick or up there in the times but I was doing it on like really old sets of tyres and just not losing any pace and I, was, you know it just builds your confidence and I like, really didn't care that I wasn't like in the top five or six because I knew what you could do yeah um, and got to round one and pretty much it, it happened apart from I got beat in every race. But it was, you know, I was there, you know, to finish third, at second three times mm-hmm. at the first round of a championship is spot on. Like, you know, it's a, almost as good as it gets within within reason. I did, I led every race up to basically the last lap in the last, two, on the last two days. I think I led, well, there were like 18 lap races on Sunday or something and 15 lappers on the, What's it? So I led ten laps of the first one and eighteen and a half, seventeen and a half of the two on Sunday or whatever it was. So I led pretty much every lap, which again is a confidence-inspiring thing. Because mm-hmm. to lead, you've got to feel comfy, and I felt I was Com- doing the pace and comfy. You know, like it wasn't I wasn't pulled apart to do it. I know I got beaten, but you know, like I was in that sort of happy place. Yeah. So yeah, it was a good start. How shocked were you by the Yamaha? See, the year before that, see, see, for me, I think Yamaha's <clears throat> dominance is throughout all the classes everywhere. Yeah. And it's so clear at the latter part of the season, you know, when all the results are coming out on the table and everything like that. But well, at that point, was was that a shock, to be blunt? What was a shock was, so the first race on the Sunday, so race two of the season, I led all the race. Yeah. And I, my bike is so strong on the brakes, like it is just a weapon. You know, that Ducati is fantastic on the brakes. <clears throat> Came out of Druids, which is the second last corner, coming up to the last corner at Oldham, which is a heavy brake zone. Absolutely my bread and butter. There's no way that anyone's going to pass me. And if they do, they're never going to make the corner. Yeah. And then a bike comes up the inside of me and parks it beautifully as if it was it was on, you know, a normal lap. And I was just like, just in shock and awe at the same time. You know, like... It didn't look like it should... It, it didn't shouldn't have happened. Like, yeah. The pace that he came up the inside of me I'd already, I'd already come in hot and deep as a normal last lap you would and I was struggling to make the corner as is and he came up the inside and just stopped it and amazing yeah <laughs> really amazing and then and then I thought ah yeah they've they've got some and then, and then the next race to be fair I think Jason actually yes I led for nearly the whole race but I think he was managing it like I'm pretty sure he just sat behind me we were we were away there was just sort of us two by then and I think he knew that he could sort of pick me off, not at will, but more or less. Yeah. Say, minim- in terms of minimising risk, it was safer to let you lead yeah. the whole thing than yeah, yeah, do yeah, at the yeah. end. Yeah. In terms of tactics, like you've got to give it to Jason. He was like bang on the first yeah, round. Mega. And, uh, it's not just that, but when you like normally on the telly, you can you don't really get a, a true justification of what actually is happening mm-hmm. in real life. Really, you go down a straight, you wait till you see Jesus, then mm-hmm. you hop on the brakes. That's essentially how you do it properly. Yep. But... When you look at that footage and like people, yeah. the photographers taking slows of it, he was beyond the edge of crashing. And the pair of you, no, you're <laughs> fully on the stops, bottom of the yeah. stroke, wheels in the back. It, he was like, so this it is, was top racking at the end of the turn. Well, exactly. Jesus. If we're going to go for what do I think is different or good about the Yamaha this yeah. year, because obviously we all, motor racing is different to most other sports because we've what we sit on is so important. So, do you know what I mean? A rider can make a big difference, but you still need the package underneath you. And certain bikes allow you to do different things. So, like when I jumped on the Duke, K, there were certain things I was able to do on it that I wasn't able to do on BM from exactly. years previous. Exactly, yeah. It's 
you know, it's not that I suddenly got better on the brakes, just yeah. it allowed me to do it. <clears throat> what I, what it seems like the Yamaha is amazing at this year, again from an outside, because I've never ridden one, so I don't know, is just an ability to brake hard and start to make the tipping on the brakes, which is not usually a big Pirelli thing, because they don't like hard brakes and lean angle <clears throat> but if you watch what jason was able to do taz was able to do top racks able to do they can break very hard into the apex and then it doesn't seem to unsettle the bike once they then release the brake it's like there's no entry phase to mid phase that this changes thing. it's like the suspension sort of stays so fluid at that point again don't know because i've not ridden one but that's what it feels like when you're riding it but even even looking at it you can just <clears throat> see that like top rack just seems to be like absolutely pissing around playing with it when do we see jonathan ray crash mm -hmm. you know what i mean this is the first year he's been properly challenged in what six <coughs> six years the, you know the, what I mean? the but, other thing as well is when you see them pass other riders even when i've watched this year taz and jason racing each other and they still never yeah. run wide you know like they no it looks clean it looks yeah unbelievably clean they go in like i know we all know what it's like you're racing at the limit aren't you like you said you see jesus you break whatever it is but <clears throat> so when you go to pass someone it's you go and push in the envelope and often you blow the corner by a foot or two foot and you just try and take the other guy out enough so that they don't pass you back yeah what it appears is that them boys are able to do that but then still make that it turn work. it it it's seems like the, to just take that turning phase so well it's like the engine brake and as the <clears throat> tip in and the tire changes it's as if they've yeah. got that like but a, i think i think it starts before that from what i can see it looks like it starts as if you watch how much break they can pull deep into a corner i think that makes a big difference mm -hmm. so that's what i say because you can get all the telemetry in the world you can watch it from an outside but unfortunately twice you, you saw that <laughs> I, did. But, I mean you couldn't like the only other person that saw that was jason himself mm -hmm. and that's incredible because really the chassis <clears throat> i'll make it sound like a part of yamaha here but like there hasn't been a significant change in the chassis but Evident, well, you don't need evident. you don't need significant changes, do you? You know, we're, now we're at a point where I think bikes are so good, and it's not. There's no real revolutionary things coming out that hasn't been for a while. Mm -hmm. But like you say, that the packages are so <clears throat> massively different. Like your Ducati is the engine with a front yeah. bolted onto the engine <laughs> yeah. and the rear bolted onto yeah. the engine. You're thinking, who the fuck? Only the Italians can come up with pornographic like that. <laughs> but then the Yamaha is in a sitting chassis, and uh -huh. you think. How the flaming bollocks they can make so many different single sw swing arms to make work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you know, in terms of, uh, go, I'm kind of thinking back to that time. Obviously, there was the big talking point that uh, Brooksy didn't start the season anywhere near as good as what anyone was kind of expecting. And also, uh, Bridewell is an Alton Park source, bit of a specialist, and he wasn't really in the on yours and Jason's wavelength at the first round. Mm -hmm. um, and then we're seeing later on in the season, he was <laughs> incredible. Yeah, like the, that race at that was at Alton Park, wasn't he, when he cleared off? Yeah, yeah, uh, that was like the most. <laughs> Most dominant display I've seen in BSB for like a long, long time. Four or five years, I think. In a, in a normal race. A yeah. do, you know what, do you know what's even more different is because by race three, normally everyone's absolutely up to pace and on the money. Everyone's got the, their setups. <clears throat> You've got more chance of doing that in race one where someone's not looked into the right setting, but, you know, they've felt good out of the box and gone. But by race three, to do that is... It's got to take my heart off when you, for no, that. When you I don't dry. like to, but that was impressive. When you think in from, the dry. When you think yeah, in the dry. First, like first round to like in the same season, same bikes, things like the the changes to the, the orders, like craziness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, big time. That, that was impressive. He must be battering his head against the wall, though. In the same breath, it's a bit like that sheer in, inner belief you have, like, look what I did. Mm -hmm. To actually record that for history to repeat itself. You must, you must have gone home and gone, why can't I do that every week? <laughs> you know what I mean, though? It's like, because once you've pulled something But that's off, the racing like, conundrum, isn't it? Of course And it when is. it's easy, it's easy. You know, like, I'm sure he got off that race and thought I could probably go even faster because that's what happened. You know, when you set a fast lap or a good race, you feel... Invincible. Yeah, like you could do it and some. Mm -hmm. But it's not true, but it's how you feel. It's crazy. And uh, obviously, Brooksy at the beginning of the season, there was like massive um, sort of, well, everyone was talking about it, wasn't it? It was one of the biggest mm. talking points that the sort of the reigning champion didn't start very strong. What was it? Um, what was it like from like inside the team? Fine for me. <laughs> It, was it... <laughs> what are you asking me? Well, it's like... Are you digging? Yeah, I am, yeah. Um, 
Yeah, like uh, so being in, it, like everyone's sort of talking and saying, "I wonder what it's how things," but you were actually like inside the garage to like see it firsthand. Did it? Um, it must have been a bit odd. Yeah, like I don't want to talk. I don't want to talk too much about someone else. I don't think it's. Un- I think it's unfair. Like unless you hear it from his point of view, like I can only see it again from the outside. It's a closer outside because I'm in the same garage. But mm. you know, Josh, Josh never lost any self belief throughout it. Um, he was adamant that it was the bike that was the the problem. Uh, I did hear there was a bloke trying to sell him insurance before he went out <laughs> every time. I that's kept sending around. I went, that's I went, I said, go and ask me, mate. That's it. He's begging He's for over it, there. Mate, over that. He's getting... <laughs> Sorry. No, so, you know, Josh, Josh was always completely adamant that it was the bike and not him. Um, you know, he <clears throat> he reverted back to identical settings from the year before and that didn't didn't make any any better um and we got to the point where we actually swapped we went and did a test and swap bikes which w- was of no benefit to me i actually wish i hadn't ridden josh's bike because there were certain things that i preferred about his right you know like sometimes if you try something different you then go oh that's something better hmm. you can't sort of mix the two because obviously yours is better in places because it's set up in a certain way and his was better in certain places because it was can't set up a different all, way but you? you can't have it all so i kind of wish i'd never done that <clears throat> that yet again was you must bat your head against the wall sometimes. Yeah, well, I wasn't... I can't have it all. You know, no, no, yeah. no. I, mean, like... I wish I had. There were certain bits well, that his bike you... did a little bit better than mine. Not loads better, but it just felt a bit better. Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, the the team were really supportive from what I saw. Mm. Um, surprisingly, almost, even to me, you know, <clears throat> they really gave him, from what I saw, um, absolute full commitment to, to writing any issues and never seemed to second guess him and, you know gave him gave him everything i think that he you know <laughs> he was british champion at the end of the day you know he deserves the mm. the what's it what happened i don't know why you know why he lost his form in that way i'm really not sure but he did come on pretty strong at the end of the season didn't he he came back strong but not not in josh brooks strong yeah but well, he didn't <clears throat> dominate like he has yeah that's past. what i mean you yeah. know like you know he's but you wouldn't say back to his best, but back yeah. to somewhere close. Yeah, back to somewhere where he sort of should be, but not where he really should be because he's well, he had the number one plate. They, that was another thing that they decided to change. Mm. You know, the number one plate they thought was partic- was possibly heavy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, you know, it's a it's a big. I don't of know. It is. Uh, that was what, did that, that make was... a diff- Did that make a difference to him? Do you think? I don't think so. No. I don't know, but I don't think so. The, the, when, the time that they did it, nothing seemed to change. Yeah. I'd like, we'll have to get Josh back on. Does it, yeah. Uh, hear it from it. I know what you mean. It's diff- <clears throat> just because you're in the garage doesn't mean like you've got that much more than like insight to what's going on than us. Well, the, the other thing I don't want to like, I don't want to bad mouth another rider or some. I, it's not my place to say. Yeah. To say that's not that would be unfair because I don't know the exact situation. Yeah. I do know that he, from what he said to me, he felt like he was pushing it to as hard as he's pushed it when he's been winning. So to him, it was a like really confusing as to why he wasn't winning sometimes even struggling to get in the points you know like mm. and he said at, <clears throat> at that pace i feel like i'm on the ragged edge and you know and he was fully of the opinion that when it comes back good he'll be back at the front it's yeah mad, it is a mad sport mine isn't it do you know mm-hmm. when you think of some, like things like that go on and i mean we've not seen that sort of thing since keo so we've not seen that for about five six years yeah keo you almost be came to accept that kind of fluctuation in results but yeah. josh has always been known for being completely just like always there you know no matter what he's the guy yeah. that always pulls the result out and it sort of just was contrary to that and what was funny is because <clears throat> the very first round at alton he was like in the group ish i think he was like sixth or seventh something like that and then you think oh well he's good at the next round and then you know you think well he's really good at the next round and then when we got to brands i think that's when the penny dropped for me fully that he is struggling, you know, mm-hmm. when we got to the first brands round and he wasn't. Yeah. He's the king of brands now. Now that shaky has gone, Josh has got a, a record that's unrivaled. So when we got there and he still wasn't in the mix and it's like, ah, it's okay. Like, even when, yeah. re- even when <clears throat> Redden won the championship, Josh did the triple that, mm-hmm. that weekend. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, it's like a machine. Yeah. And there's been times when like, say we've turned up at Alton and from FP1, he's like in years gone by and from FP1, he's just been like a machine and mm-hmm. like, you just know he's going to win, win the races. And, and f- for me, from a personal perspective, I almost started to want him to do well. Like at first I didn't mind that he was behind. And then at the point when he was struggling, probably at his most, I was like, there's, not there's no point me beating him, but I'm not 
actually beating the Josh Brooks. Yeah, you know, like yeah, he's not at his best. He's not at his best, so yeah. I can't really chalk it up as a. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. I tell you what, I'm glad you brought up the number one thing. You know, do you, you know the heaviness of the number one, mm-hmm. do you, and you change that mid season. You know, like, do, like, do you like? I'm gonna come out and say it. Do you wish you changed your number or? No, no, not at all. You just um, have, the what number one thing didn't phase you because I like, like I tell you what, my granddad is horrendously superstitious. Same with my uncle, but then the rest of the family aren't. And you just think immediately, there's just two total different comparisons on that. Mm-hmm. So it was interesting that you changed it. So there must be a little bit of a superstitious element of that. I don't well, know. I don't you. know. I don't know the fellow well enough to can. Are oh, you superstitious? You know. But I don't know if he changed it or if the team changed it. Yeah. But you know, like <clears throat> flip, you spend hundreds of thousands of pounds changing bits on bikes. I mean, it's stickers. What five p? You might as well have a go. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred <laughs> percent. No, I couldn't agree more. It's just that element, isn't it? But so, I'm glad he ran it. I'm glad you ran yours. Yeah. Yes. I, I think like I like. It's a touch of class. Yeah, you know, like we've like we've got it again next year in MotoGP that it's not going to have the number one plate. Quattro is going to keep his number. Is he? Is yeah, he? <clears throat> that's what I heard. So Obviously, Juan May kept his number this year with a bit of a one in it and stuff like that. But I don't know. Personally, I just think you work all your life for achieving something like that. You know, like you stick that thing on your bike. So what if you're a target? You're a target because you're great. You know, like yeah, you must have felt proud, you Chrissy, having that when it wheels out of pit lane. You know, you've got that one on, like. Yeah, it's, it's, like say, it's, it's a, proper. You work, it is. You work hard for it, don't you? And yeah. if it, it, you, you don't know. Obviously, you would hope that it's not the only chance in your career uh-huh. that you're going to run it. But being realistic, it might, you know that it might be. It is a po- a, a possibility. So um, yeah, it's like it's not many, not that many people get a chance to do it. So it's like I've, I've seen it as like an a, a honor. Yeah, and like it was, brilliant. Yeah, it's. Um, I definitely don't. I, I know I've had a terrible season, but I don't regret it, and I don't. I don't. Um, it wasn't that. a cause. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, yeah, don't. I, I don't feel like that anyway. Um, going back to so round one, fantastic. Round two, was, did you get your first race win? Round two, yep. I'm trying um, to think, was that Knockhill? Knockhill was round two. Won the first race. Mint. Um, yeah, so I've done <laughs> three lots of second and then a win. So job of the dreams. Led the championship from there. Mm-hmm. I had a bit of a more difficult day on the Sunday, but just got done over a little bit really in the races. Finished the final race got red flagged and had got punted off track the lap before it got red flagged got myself back into a podium place but it went back a lap to the point that i'd got punted so i remember that, that kind of just dropped me down yeah mm-hmm. um and then brands was the next one got another win there another podium still leading the championship and then went to thruxton and that's pretty much where it all started to go wrong for me big time mm-hmm. um I was dead nervous actually going to Thruxton because I've never, I love the place. I think it's brilliant. Uh, never struggle for pace. I can put a lap in, no bother, but I've never had a result there. Mm. Um, it's just never like me, you know, just for million and one reasons. I've never had a result. Um, and that's the first time I've been there on the Ducati and I was like, you know, like, how are we going to fare? Because there wouldn't have been any tests and whatsoever. No, they don't. Thruxton. I mean, that's the good thing because nobody tests there. So it's not like you're in... You're in the same boat. Unless you're on a previous bike from last year yeah. kind of thing, yes, I. Yeah, so, um, <clears throat> yeah, finished second in the first race. And I, was, yeah, and I was just like, <laughs> you know, I've come to the worst track for me that I thought was going to be the worst track. Got on the podium in the first race. And I, I, it was funny because I, I was in Park Fermi afterwards, you know, like collecting the, the trophy and on the podium, whatever, and I'm like, this is my year. You know, like I cannot do any anything wrong. Literally, I've turned up to this track, which I was really, honestly, I was nervous about going to. You know, I was like, got to save a tire, can't push it. You know, I've struggled there before. You know, why? You know, mm. how's the Ducati going to be? And this, that, and the other. I got on the podium. I'm like, in my year, even when it's stacked against us, you know, I can get a podium. And then the very next race, um, I got collected by Lee Jackson, <clears throat> oh, and shit, he, he completely didn't mean to. You know, like I. <laughs> poor lad like he, he felt bad about it you know when you take down anyone it's bad when you take down the championship leader i think you feel a little bit <laughs> even worse yeah um and that's the first time i'd ever fallen off the duke like ever mm-hmm. so do you know I'd, it, the last few podcasts we've done with you i've i've known that that's running <laughs> 
like a running thing because I was on the same thing last year. But it's yeah. one of them that even if you're superstitious yeah, you or not, you never went down, did you? On that one, no. If you're superstitious or not, you just don't talk about uh-huh. it. It's one of those things. So like, I don't knew, bring it up. I knew you were on that run, but I didn't like. I didn't want to bring it up because I thought like I just. But yeah, once it's and then it's not your fault. But when you go down, but it's kind of you did like. Yeah, it's that's that's a lovely streak to be on. And oh I, yeah, I mean, I hadn't realised how long it had been. It was something like I think because Whitman told me on the grid the next race and it was something like 33 consecutive races finishing. But like I said, what most people didn't realise is that I'd never fallen off the Ducati at all. Not in a single test, test, not in a, you know, I'd been out the first year that I signed up for for PBM. I went and took a bike out for, you know, nearly a month and out in Spain and, you know, never fell off anything. I mean, I've been flipping close. I've been through the screen a few times and, you know, like all sorts of things, hit a few barriers, but never never actually hit the deck mm-hmm. so it was like it wasn't a wasn't a bad crash but i was a bit bad that the tarmac at thruxton's very abrasive flipping so abrasive it went clean through the side of my boot i was lucky that it didn't go any further because i was sort of under the bike did, did you do you know oh, uh, glenn Sorry. crashed at about 160 and he literally like stopped straight away because it's that <laughs> it's that grip oh, it's so abrasive obviously it like absolutely like spawns the tires but yeah. like if you crash on it i mean like, a few times i've crashed and it just rips your leathers open yeah, it's com- it. oh, yeah. it's a completely different sort of tarmac that you've never. I don't know. I don't even know how you describe it. And yeah, like, it's so drifty as a track. Is it? Yeah, I think it's, it's just the not, speed not, element of it, though. Yeah, it's, mm. it's crazy, uh, crazy grippy in the wet as well. Like if, it's full, that, full, if it's that, because it's so abrasive. What's the lap times difference between in the wet Very and the dry? Little. It's like three seconds. Or yeah, something. really full close. Wet to full dry. Yeah, really close. That is grippy. That yeah. point, isn't it? <laughs> so that was so that was the start of the rot, really, um, and not. Like, not that I can't put it down to Lee taking me out. He didn't mean to, and it wasn't... He you got, had, you got collected. He had no effect on the rest of what happened, but what I mean is that was the start of sort of a run of this, things going the other way. This game is so much about... The momentum. ball of shit was starting yeah. together. <laughs> it, it was rolling. <laughs> this game is so so much about momentum, though, uh-huh. and you're saying it's not... That didn't cause it, but you, you, you just never known, like, it... Yeah, it definitely uh-huh. was a, a turning point, mm-hmm. and you know, yeah, it's, like I say, Lee didn't mean to do it. No, but it, he it he, was, he he got out of shape, had to release the brakes, and I was just to be fair, if I was a foot further around the corner, he would have missed me completely. It was just so one it's your of things. It was my <laughs> fault. I should have been further out front. <laughs> and then the next race was like half and half, and I just struggled. I'm normally really good in them sort of conditions. I couldn't see shit through my visor. There was some kind of oil stuff coming up off the track. Yeah, Did you ride it like that? Uh, no, it... but uh, we had a dry race there, but I remember everyone speaking about that. Some, um, yeah, I remember people like saying... like oily substance. I just, it was, honestly, I've, I was struggling to see grass from tarmac. It was that bad at times. It was really, like, it was. I was trying to find wet bits to try and spray my own visor to try and clear a little bit it mm-hmm. was hard to see anything Jesus. at all i tell you what you're a bit of a running joke in our family it's like it's pissing down rain it and i'll have a slick in <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like that guy who's wet tire war he'll have a slick in tell you me and Lauren like that well, happened at the it, next round i know mate honestly i tell you what before i forget this i've got to put it in you are serious in credit to this sport you, you like every rider needs to hang on to their bike more often doesn't matter how <laughs> fast it is right how you must be in my opinion the most employable rider to any <laughs> manufacturer period it's like that kind of um, him why he's the only one who's got the balls enough to hang on to the head you have, you have, that's just because I figure I always even I when forget- it's not your fault you commit to the whole young and it's I, I just forget that there's no there's not a restart rule I forget it's not until I stand forget- back up that I'm like oh, I can't even get back on it anyway but- and and you can't even do it in I think it comes from motocross and supermoto where you can you can crash twice in a race and get nobody blinks an eyelid and you can still win a race or finish well up you know like it's so close in short circuits even if you did get back on unless it's a wet encounter you're not finishing anywhere but yeah yeah. But, no, but it's me for for me watching it. I just think, go on, so you just so, think if someone's going to sponsor you a bike, it's like, can you make an effort to hold on to it, mate? You know what I mean? So after Sorry. Uh, after uh, Thruxton, was it Cadwell or Donington? No, it was Donington. Donington next. Um, again, yeah, so Don- I'd got I'd got took out by Lee, not took out, but you know, like collected by Lee, wiped out. Yeah. <laughs> then I'd have had a really poor second race, uh, third race, as it was. Sorry, and then went to Donington and. First race was fourth, so we were all right. We're back in the back in the mix, and then real early on in the second race, got wiped out by Andrew Irwin, and that one I was like seething about. That yeah. one to me was 
a mm. wipeout. The so, one with Lee was very different to Andrew. Yeah, big talking point. This <laughs> this round, there was loads. Uh, there was loads going on at the time, and I never really, I really like did not understand what was going on. Hugh, uh, something happened in was it free practice or qualifying between yourself and Glenn, where as oh. you were coming into pit lane, something like there was how a, long you got. It, like well, oh, the thing is that yeah, there's uh, like. <laughs> I was at the paddock in like in the paddock, and I don't really understand it. So I presume a lot of people listening like know that there was something went on, but like, like what started it? It's a great question. Um, we, myself and Glenn, had a telephone conversation the Tuesday after the weekend, and I asked him exactly the same thing. Uh, I think he just decided that weekend he had something in for me. Um, so did it start this weekend? It had start yes. Um, it started that weekend at Donington. It stemmed back to or his explanation of it. I don't want to go. I don't want to tell you exactly what's what, but his yeah. explanation of it was from something that he wasn't even didn't have any first hand experience of, of. It was something he got told that I did to another rider whilst on track. It's on TV, and and that rider hadn't complained or done anything. You know, like it was just a really strange thing. So he said he'd seen something on TV and decided that I was a dangerous rider, and therefore he would ride hard against me so in the first race um i'd made th- this is this was the catalyst uh, i'd made a pass on glenn at, at turn one <clears throat> gone up the inside of him and was deep on the front end and i thought well if i keep turning i might lose the front glenn's on the outside of me good chance i'll fall off so sort of just lifted the bike a little bit but only what you would normally do um and then yeah I think he decided that I lifted him on purpose and rather than him asking me about it and I would have told him that explanation, decided to have a little bit of a vendetta that weekend, um, <clears throat> which is a shame because it really, I think it, a lot of things were said and done that weekend. I tend to stay quite quiet, but there was a lot of mouthiness going on and I don't think he really means it. I think sometimes can just let words get ahead of him a few times and it went from there. Um <clears throat> He did something purposeful to me in morning warm-up, which was try and cut me up. Um, and when someone does something that's on purpose, it's I don't take kindly to that. You know, it's dangerous and dangerous enough sport as it is. I was literally pulling into pit lane, sort of minding my own business, and then all of a sudden a Honda went, you know, swiped my nose off me. Um and then there was a lot of smack talk on the grid and stuff like that. I hadn't even heard because obviously I'm on the grid anyway. And then you sort of listen to it back later and or someone says, oh, you know, you're getting smack talked about. I'm like, really? You know, like, and then you listen to it and you're like, where did that come from sort yeah. of thing? And um, yeah, so the the big end of it was, and it was kind of the one of the least sporting things I think I've ever seen. And I hope to never encounter something like this. And I'm going to give him the benefit of doubt and just think it was you know, hot head and headedness in the moment. But uh, Andrew, in my eyes, took me down. Um, and as I was sliding off, Glenn was the next one in line behind and and managed to have the presence of mind to do a fist pump that had fallen off, which, <clears throat> yeah, doesn't sit right with me. No. He, he's got no idea whether I've hurt, not hurt, um, what's gone on, what's going on in my life or whether I deserve... Nobody deserves anything. No. So, yeah, it was kind of one of them. We we agreed to not disagree but we i listened to his side and i accepted you know whatever he thought was at the moment was what he thought did he apologize for fist pumping yeah i'm gonna go i'm gonna say yes i don't remember i don't remember it exactly mm. but like i said i'm gonna give him benefit of the doubt i don't <clears throat> i think i think anyone can understand that's not the right thing to do yeah <laughs> Yeah, definitely. But like we, we see, talked about it at the time. Uh, like I remember, we yeah, talked about yeah, it on the podcast about it at the time, didn't we? and but... uh, said it was like, uh, it, like yeah, whatever you thought of the move, like, it was like sort of cheering for anyone crashing. Yeah, it's just like a no. Yeah, yeah I can't imagine. No. Yeah, it's it doesn't no-go, cross yeah. my mind. It, I was really surprised when I, I couldn't believe it when I saw it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. <clears throat> so, and was that after after the weekend? After the phone call, was that like sort of? Did you feel that was like right with? metaphorically shook hands and put it put it to bed type of thing yeah yeah um it's a shame because i do have a lot of respect for all my rivals but i couldn't help but that took some off that Mm -hmm. with glenn yeah but still respect him as a racer and a rival but it just uh, as a person i lost lost one little bit (laughs) no well i never would anyway but you know don't drink but you know (laughs) 
<laughs> Unless it's the <laughs> big night out. Once every twice a year, that's it, exactly. Unless you're getting married. You yeah, I was, it was just a surprise to me that I could be racing against someone that would have the thought process to cheer on when yeah. someone's crashed. Do you know that same weekend? I remember Hickman. We've never seen Hickman like that before. He was like <laughs> super aggressive. Was was he involved in the same... Was he like sort of sticking up for you? No, no, I know of. No, no, I no idea. I mean, at this point in the season, things had started to turn into bumper cars already. You know, it was starting yeah, it to get like serious, crazy. Wasn't it? It like, was, wasn't it? There was passes that... It was as if like... There's like this like game that you, if you pass, you Extra have to points. yeah, you have to clip them just a little bit. You know, like uh-huh. it, it became a thing almost. You know, it was. It's not really a pass unless you rub. Yeah, I don't know if it was the the Robin's closeness racing and the, everyone saw the same. Yeah, memo. I don't know if it was the closeness of the racing that caused it, mm. so that you you know we're so near each other that mm. actually to make a move, everyone's so much on the limit that to make a move, you have to take the line that they're on. Or what, but it did start to get. I mean, I saw the one that you know, the Hickman versus Andy Irwin down Craner, and that was a you know, that was a big move, and they were lucky to stay on. It was a mm. monster, and the move. one at the last, the final chicane, and that one, that yeah, was like con- proper contact, yeah, 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 yeah. So, and then, and then it obviously, then we've got now in racing all over. This is another completely another really long topic, but obviously, we've got race control getting involved in different things, and when does something become punishable, you know, like you can hit someone really hard and as long as they don't fall off does that make it all right that's going off the skill of the other person yeah t- uh, making it like yeah yeah so like <clears throat> with the two situations i was involved in so i was involved I was, I was involved in more actually but with um lee jackson he i've watched it back got out of shape collected me completely trying not to collect me <clears throat> he had he had a a natural penalty because he crashed, so no points. He got a three-place grid drop and points on his license. We have a license scheme. Mm-hmm. Um, Andrew, on the other hand, which I feel was, well, it's certainly more <laughs> forceful and and done with meaning than what Lee did because Lee definitely was out of shape, <clears throat> um, whereas Andrew was trying to make a pass in whichever ma- fashion that he was. He just got a three-second penalty in that race. There's no natural penalty because he didn't fall off himself. So he keeps all his points from that race. Mm. His three-second penalty dropped him back one position or two positions. Mm. I was fully penalised because I was in the gravel. So, yeah, how the penalties work. And then if we then fast forward a lot towards the end of the season, uh, Taron clipped my handlebars um, and I went off track at Alton Park. So... I didn't crash in that one. I went from fourth place to 15th place. But, you know, I didn't fall off. So th- does that mean that you don't get a penalty or you... Do you know what I mean? It's a it's a real grey area. Yeah. Um, It's hard. And a also, hard one. If, and we've said this from day one. As soon as there's... With the whole penalty issue, because it's subjective yeah. and there's a massive sort of grey area in every issue, it means... The, there's a huge problem with consistency because <laughs> yeah. it's impo- it is physically impossible to be 100% consistent throughout all the race and throughout all the season throughout all the championship uh, different People championships wouldn't watch. and it's um it's to me like there's there's so many examples that if you were like scrutinizing it like one would be a 10 second one would be a 3 second one would be the and it's like well yeah unless you had like a rule book with it all stated black and white with like do this you get this pen it's yeah it's a, it's a can of worms and um in a funny sort of sense you know if you take away all of the the intervention from race control there's like a natural way that things settle out so mm-hmm. someone's been if someone's riding out of out like too aggressive the the tend to like get get a bit back and yeah. then that sort of which what you out. were saying was hickman doing that for me yeah, yeah. Or, well, not the case or but something i don't know yeah or it gets sorted out in the paddock <laughs> or the, there's, there's like natural ways for things to get sorted so we out. need a boxing ring <laughs> yes what's chris is saying is no race control but after if anyone's got an issue with anyone <laughs> yeah. we're gonna have pay-per-view um, yeah well i yeah, I, I think couldn't agree more. I'm I'm of the opinion like less like yeah I'm not a big fan of race control getting involved in issues, but I, I do understand the 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 doing it from a good place like for the safety of the competitors. Like I totally get it, but I just think it's too difficult to to be consistent. Yeah, well, I, I mean, like I said, I've been I've been in a few 
this year because I've been <laughs> involved in so many incidents mm. that I don't really think I should have been involved in. But you know, I've been in I've been in race control a few times, and it seems like this year they've gone along the lines of if someone falls off due to another rider, they have to impose a penalty mm. or they have to be seen to impose a penalty. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, for example, Lee Jackson, I don't feel personally that he should have got a penalty. We all make a mistake. He made a mistake. Mm-hmm. He got penalized naturally because he didn't finish the race. Okay, I crashed, whatever. Um, <clears throat> but he didn't mean to. He literally was too late on the brakes and couldn't stop. You know, it's just one of them. Um and then you go to another example, such as the Andrew one, or even a different one where myself and Josh had a coming together. Josh took me down in qualifying at uh, Snetterton, and that was another that had no that had no impact on me whatsoever. And he got a penalty because he had to be seen to have a penalty. Mm-hmm. I sat completely silent in the race control because I didn't want anything to do with it. I didn't want to cause a fuss with Josh, mm-hmm. so I didn't say a word. Um, but they penalised him with whatever they penalised him on because another rider had been involved and been took down. So he, I don't always agree that you have to impose a penalty just because someone fell off. Mm. So, for example, the last example I used when Taron took me, I think, took me off track. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, to me, had a big impact on me. Mm. And I feel... You should have really crashed it. It was only the fact that you, you had yeah. presence of mind. <clears throat> exactly. To keep so, it right. And I feel that that should have been penalised way more than Josh should have been penalised or way more than Lee should have been penalised because those two... Okay, Lee's one had an impact on me, but Josh's one certainly didn't. Lee didn't mean it. Okay, maybe Taron didn't mean it, but he certainly... We're racing for the championship at that point. That was really late on in the year when it was... We were one and two or one and three. It was crucial. So... There's it's thing. hard. There's another thing as well is when it happens, like I know a case of like, for example, Lewis Rollo took uh, Craig Neve out because Craig <sighs> Neve's not in the like in the top fifteen in the championship. Yeah, Craig there's no went pen- rattling down. And that was I like, heard about that no, one. No, was, no, that pro- was at the old hairpin, wasn't it? Oh, going Smack. in the old hairpin, and, and like obviously proper massive crash. And like if that if he'd done that to Billy McConnell, mm-hmm. it would have definitely be it definitely been a penalty. Yeah. Where and the, again, but like so, Craig just Neve's opening a can of bike, and he's been in a bit and of and the other hardest so. thing is what gets seen. Mm. That's it. <laughs> the, the, for every one incident that happens, there's probably a hundred that don't get seen. Yeah, I think I've got a copy of that crash. I've got that on video. Yeah, what Neves? Yeah, yeah, Neves crash. Neves sent it to me. I there think. you go. Um, Send it to you. So going on from the from Donington, oh, we would uh, in race three as well. Yeah, that crash down crazy. Yeah, so didn't you, yeah, <clears throat> so um, got took out no points in the first race on Sunday, and then the second race. You were just saying that I like my old tyre choices. I went for... It was a drying track. For me, it was a no-brainer. We're going to go as dry as we possibly can. Did they even keep you an intermediate on the shelf? <laughs> well, no, that's that, that's the mistake I made. I put an into front on because I second-guessed myself. Everyone else had gone wet front into rear, and I had gone into front slick rear. So all you have to do is get through the first few laps when it's wetter, which I did. And I was like, oh, job's a dream now. Uh, I think it was Bridal in the lead, and then the two Irwins, were, they'd got quite a gap. And I, did, I thought they'd got too much of a gap um, and I folded the front down Karina just because the, the rear overpowered the front into. Right. And that's what happened. What I didn't realise is the lap before I was a second a lap faster than everyone in front and I only had an eight second, second gap to pull in 14 laps or something. It was a easy. But those gaps are really difficult to judge. If I'd probably done one more lap, I would have seen the board come down by enough, but I didn't. I was like, I could see them at turn one as I was coming out the last corner and I thought, that's a big gap. <clears throat> so I was... I put the hammer down and lasted three corners. Mm. And that was my first error. Your crash. My first error. Like, absolutely. Hold my hands up. And I I was devastated. Because not only that, I'd sort of afterwards, when I watched it back, it was almost worse because I saw what I'd pulled. I looked at TSL on the timing. And I was oh. like, Would have oh, been man. The, yeah, definitely. That was so easy. Uh-huh. You're, you're never in a position. <laughs> no, but you're never in a position. I wasn't on the same massive thing as t- everyone else. Massive tyre advantage yeah. for that for those conditions. Exactly. Because Bridewell was on full inters at that point, wasn't he? So. Yeah. It, it was, and that's when yes. he won the race. Yeah, he, full yeah, yeah. he never ran into us before that, apparently. No, one of the... so that was my first mistake. Mistake. So I'd gone DNF, fourth, DNF, DNF. <sighs> <clears throat> so I was like, oh man, this is not good. It's a long drive home. On yeah. to that weekend, yeah. Cadwell after that. Cadwell. Um, the, go on, talk us through that weekend. So this is where the wheels are really... Cadwell and Snetterton are where the wheels start falling off the wagon big time. Oh. Mm. Big time. So... Gone from can't do anything wrong 
to can't do too much right. So before Cadwell, my crew chief's Italian tests positive for the Rona or gets pinged or whatever it is, so he's not turning up. <clears throat> not the end of the world. It's, I thought it was fine. Um, we don't change too much on the bike, but it was just the first, like, it's not the best start when you lose a crucial member of your team. Mm. Um, and Cadwell's the first time that I struggled for proper pace. Um, you know, like Donington, we didn't have the results, but I was pace enough to be flipping it should have been three podiums really and it it wasn't it was none yeah um so yeah qualified ninth and i was like pulled apart to do it finished fifth in the first race which i was really happy about because that was better than what my pace had shown and then folded the front out of second position in the second race and i was like oh man i'm down again i was just i couldn't believe it you know i've gone 33 races without crashing now i've gone five crashes in nine races or whatever it is you know like twice not my fault twice it is my fault held on to that one as well held on to that one <laughs> that's and a then, fast place to go down yeah, it was. Mm. and then then i'm on like then for this the final race i'm on like row five or something which it's a long way back again <laughs> and i can't remember where i think i think i finished seventh which again was a good result but not not as it should be mm. you know at that point is right it's, you know what i mean a british level like you lads are there how it, Momentum, you mentioned that right at the beginning of the podcast, uh-huh. and it's such a hard thing to gain and hold. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. At that point, how, like, where are you mentally at that? It's Christian, isn't it? It's a bit like, fuck, fuck. I will, fuck, it, fuck. it started to get difficult, i got to admit. Yeah. At that point, <clears throat> so it's completely different and outside, and you shouldn't ever bring your outside world into yeah. racing, but sometimes you can't help it. So from Cadwell, um, uh, my granddad had become really sick and I, I'm I'm close to my granddad. We're a close family and, you know, I, we, we went straight back from there to to go and um, see him, really, uh, to basically say my last goodbyes. Oh, Jesus, man. So that was, <clears throat> that was hard. And then at the same time, um, I'd actually managed to get sick in the middle of the year. So that was something else I was dealing with completely. So between, between uh, Cadwell and Silverstone, I was going through... Flip, I must have had five or six different tests in different places and we were waiting for the results of them. Mm. Um, I'd done hurt my arm in the crash at Cadwell in the second race. I'd popped something out of my muscle. My, part of my muscle was sticking out and it was hurting like crazy, you know, like, so it was just a really weird, weird time, you know, as if as if everything was going wrong all at once. <clears throat> like I said before, the momentum thing. Isn't yeah, it? And, and actually, because we still this year had a more succinct championship, you know, we started late again, didn't we? Mm-hmm. So the championship was really condensed to the second half of the year. Mm. You know, it was pretty much two weeks on, one week off, rather than one week on, one week off, or and then two weeks off. You know, it was a really yeah. you had three triple ed- uh, three double letters. Yeah. So when it's rolling in your direction, it's actually it's mint. It's great that sort of championship because once you're rolling, you can keep yeah. rolling, <clears throat> and once you're not, it's hard to get it going back your way. Mm-hmm. So I turned up to Snetterton. Um, my granddad had passed away. Um, which was probably n- not help. I don't want to say it was a help, but you know, like it was a uh, something that's done and over with sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like at least you could put it to this the side of your mind or whatever. Yet, so. You know what I mean? And then, um, so I'd got my arm fixed up. That was better. Um, and I'd had. I knew more what was wrong with me. So that was at least not good news, but it was at least I knew what was going on. Yeah. So I turned up to Snetterton actually feeling, you know, a lot better about things. I thought Cadwell's the worst one. Got it out of the way. I won at Snetterton the year before, my first ever win. Flip, I've never ridden so slow in my life when I got to Snetterton. I couldn't believe it. It was so bad. (laughs) So, so bad. I didn't get into Q2. It's the first time I've not got into Q2 straight away. Um. And it was just hard, really, really hard. And just found myself, I was lost, couldn't find the bike to suit what I wanted to do. Josh, on the other hand, that weekend, had not he, was, he wasn't like going really, really fast, but he was using the hard option tyre and going pretty damn fast. Yes. Yeah, and we were thinking, right, well, he's going to be able to run those times consistently because he's on the hard tyre and everyone else on the softer one. And at the end of the race, he's going to be faster than everyone else and probably win the race. Mm-hmm. So we got into the first race and decided because josh can do it we'll run the hard tire Mm. and hopefully i'll do what he can do or somewhere near and i crashed on the first lap i just lit it up i wasn't used to the tire that i ran and 
I was on the ass again. <laughs> and I was just like, no, really, you know, and that that probably was the lowest point of my year mm. period, you know, like completely and utterly that was the lowest point because I hadn't even had completed in qualifying. I, Josh um, crashed into me and we both went down. Mm. So then the very first race, I literally did five corners and crashed again on my own. And it was just like, oh, man. You know, like, what can you do? I'm at the track where I know the bike works well. I won here last year. I'm really struggling for points, you know, to get in the points. And I just can't find my mojo and I can't find a feeling on my bike. And, you know, where's it gone? It's the same bike that I've had all year. There's literally yeah. no reason for this. Jesus. One, one of the hardest things in this sport, I think, <clears> is when you're on that downward to, to, to like... Uh, level it and then yeah. turn it back up because yeah. it's so so difficult so that's to be fair that was the mindset so even from Donington we'd started to not notice that we we're on the the wrong side of the slope but you know we were like right by then I'd accumulated so many points for at the start of the year that I was almost a certainty of being in the showdown so mm. it kind of didn't matter apart from a few token podium credits mm. so all we really focused on was trying to get the trend to go back upwards for the last three rounds so even you know from Cadwell onwards we were trying to get that trend turned back around and it was it was more about trying to yeah just get the confidence back yeah, speaking as you know like not naming teams or anything like that but you've rode for several you've, you've rode as a professional rider for a few years now and now it's, it's such a difficult question because every team will react different but you know when you're on that down mm -hmm. how understanding of the teams do they like do they literally have you ever been threatened for a sack at this point no, don't do do not name the team no, but i mean not, is, it, is it a case of going it's not that you threatened for the sack in that moment or yeah, whatever but it, you realize that <laughs> racing it's so fickle you're only you're only as good as your last race is the mm -hmm. <laughs> is the you for know pe for people that are self-aware as well you know where like you know understand the situation and you know like everyone kind of knows what the score is. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. It, it, it really doesn't matter who's saying what or who's putting mm -hmm. pressure on or whatever because you, you know yourself and you put yourself... Oh, like in. And not no, only that, no, 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 you know, no. the only other thing that's hard is is you you are... Okay, It's a our sport is an individual, but it's not. No. You know, that's, it's that's, a that's... whole team around. And when, when your side of the garage is buoyant, you can feel the buoyancy mm -hmm. and it breeds a good feeling and it's yeah, you know that's success let's go on track success. yeah exactly mm -hmm. and when it's the other way you know it's hard and the mechanics are tired and they, they want the results as much as you do you know more or less and you know like you can you can feel the pressure on them as much as you can and it's just oh, you, you can almost feel the tension building over time when when things aren't going the right way yeah, and one, I, I, what, I, one thing that is true as well is the all of the more times that you have like that, you really appreciate when it goes right. Uh -huh. Like say, like later on in the season at Donington, when you're like say doing the business and you're back in the podium, whatever. Like if you've been on the podium all year, it starts to become a bit numb. It's like uh -huh. almost expected. Uh -huh. And like, I've had seasons before where like you like work like so hard to get in like your first podium, you're like so ecstatic, and then within a few rounds, you're like you win win a race and like you come in you're like yeah bang on like and like emotions like just not there where well, when i you mean you you must have had it from 2020 to 2021 in in a way you know like you were winning yeah week yeah. in week out and then you got your first win this year at Galton, wasn't it yeah yeah that's... and i'm sure the emotion on that one was far higher than the, the last one that you had on exactly that yeah because <laughs> you yeah it, it makes it feel a lot more real doesn't right. it and uh yeah a lot it's sort of the, the the more sort of rubbish that you go through it makes it feel a lot better when it does come good oh no i know i told oh sorry i buggered some I'm crackling there crackling like mad but no not like my i totally understand that element of it you know you, you you're working as a team all the through the year but i'm just saying when you watch a race on the telly you know, it's that immediate, it's the sofa warrior, isn't it? Going, you know what I mean? Just going right there and you immediately go, he's getting sacked. You know what I mean? I'm just wondering, you know, as, as, uh, do career riders get that element of it? You know what I mean? It's like, look, son, <laughs> you've You're, got two you, more. You, you are acutely aware of like, oh, for no, example, no, at that point, you would be acutely aware that if you didn't sort of you, pull you, your, like get it sorted by the end of the season, that your job, yeah. your job would oh, be in, in question, mm. wouldn't it? So on, on that, has, has, have your team announced for next year or? <laughs> That's a, touchy subject that one right should we just leave that one then probably yeah fair enough <laughs>
But it's not Honda. Honda, <laughs> uh, Honda have put their riders out, so there you go. I'm trying to think who's Fe- Feho as a mystery rider. No, there's, there's, we'll, got the we'll, get, we'll get to the rumor mill, but we'll go. Um, oh, I want to know. I want to know now who's the second rider for Feho then. I don't know. No, I don't know. No, I, there's a, like, you know, the outline thing they do, you know, so they've got the Pete Hickman and then the question mark for the second. Mm, you'd think it would be, yeah, like a... Well, they had Francis on it at the end of the year, didn't they? Mm-hmm. They did. He they was did going well. Job. He went, went quite well. There you go. Anyway, that's the end of the show. That's where, let's go back to it. So like like you say, you're, you're a bigger critic. You're on the lull. Yeah. It's about getting out that lull. What was the next stage of there? So Snet day one was... A... Race one, yeah, the lowest. One of the actually personally one of the lowest moments I've had in a long, long time. It was pretty dark. It was horrible. Mm. Um, but fine, we'll regroup. <laughs> There's worse things under the sun in there. So um, the second day, I think I finished eleventh or something in the first race. Again, properly off the boil, rubbish. And then we put the soft tire in for the last race, and I was racy again. Um, it was a red flagged race, so it was it was a two part race. And I was, I finished fifth, but I was battling at the end of the race. I was within a second and a half of the win. So it was like, that was the first start to the trend that you've hit your yeah. trough, starting to rebuild to, to get back on the, on the upward. Do you know, um, when things are going difficult and like, say, if I had like a stinking race weekend, there's some riders I know that can completely, they jump in the motorhome and by the time they get home, they can like park the race in, in like a box and leave it at the track and then just be completely <laughs> normal at home and then get, and, and then there's, I know some riders like, and I would say I'm more in category two where like you have like a min weekend and you are like peaking mm. all week. Nothing, like nothing can go wrong. It, whatever happens at work whatever happens at home like you've had a good weekend nothing else matters but on the same side of the guy you've had a bad weekend and like everything's bad and you just come home and like you feel rubber uh-huh. are you uh, can you park it no tr- yeah like, not one bit can you if you've had a stinking weekend does it affect your week your next week or can you just park oh 100 percent. Yeah, yeah i think but i but i get massive. like uh even to be fair even after a good weekend i think i get the a buzz come down Yes, mm-hmm. like uh, holiday blues type of thing. Yeah, proper struggle with Mondays, and not the not just Mondays. I mean, post race weekend Mondays. Are... Yeah, because everything else feels rubbish. Yeah, in average. Yeah, it's it's one of them things that uh, who well, I know you haven't listened to it yet, but the last podcast we did with James Tozlin's very much touching on that subject and Is like it? the yeah the sort of like after sort of winning world championships and uh-huh. racing at two hundred miles an hour, having like then been forced into retirement through an injury yeah and finding apps having like 10 years of finding absolutely nothing that comes close to mm-hmm. that and it, it, he, was, he sort of likened it to being a recovering drug addict where he kind of knows that he'll never be able to have that buzz again but like misses it like crazy mm. and I, to- I can imagine totally understand can imagine. Yeah. but yeah uh, Matt, you, <clears throat> so you did what we're saying is like one of the hardest things to do in this sport and to attend to, turn it round mm-hmm. and uh, real strong end of the season especially Donington yeah. uh, we did a podcast just before the final round and like because of the because of the <laughs> momentum thing and the fact that the things I like really fancied you going in the last round I thought I don't know because he's based in the north east now let's face yeah, it yeah it probably was sort of <laughs> a heart leading ahead a little bit but I, uh, I was I just thought it sort of teed up perfectly Donington I mean big pressure weekend Donington dodgy weather conditions and like mm-hmm. you're properly like on, on your A game yeah well we got to the first round of the showdown was uh, Alton Park Jason had a- accumulated a massive I know it I mean it gets wiped but it doesn't because the podium credits that he'd a- accumulated were just insane you know like the season that Jason put together was just unbelievable <clears throat> I think he had 45 points over me as we went as we went into the showdown so it's still a massive point swing on someone who's firing on all cylinders you know you yeah. still think that this is hard um, but I was racy again you know I was racy at the right point in the season again we'd sort of I wasn't exactly as I had been at the start of the year, um, but I was within Nat's whisker of it. So, yeah, had a good weekend at Alton. Um, Jason clipped a curb in the first race and went down, then crashed on his own accord in the third race again or something like that. So we had two DNFs. Taron took, Taron took the lead of the championship and I was and I'd pulled back to, I think I pulled back to 33 points behind Taron at that point after that weekend and that was that crunch moment when i ended up in the gravel because that that i think i would have been a second place and i was 11th so it would have been a 15 point swing so it would have put me to within 18 points of the lead but it didn't Mm -hmm. 
and then Donington. And Donington, we just finished third, third and second. And it was some of the most treacherous conditions I've ever ridden in. You know, that was just... That track was crazy. And again, it started, it started out such a bad weekend. So um, on the Saturday in qualifying, they brought everything... Did they bring it forward or backwards? It was forward, wasn't it? Forward they tried to beat the rain. Yeah, for us, that was it. Yes, I. They tried to beat the rain, so we were we had a very condensed uh, qualifying and into race one. I, I think it was about yeah, I think it was about an hour between the the end of qualifying and the start of the first race. And uh, <clears throat> very first lap, the out lap, Josh crashed before he even started a flying lap, mm-hmm. and I was like, oh, shame. But I carried on, and started my first flying lap, and nearly crashed at the top of Craner somehow stayed on it only through luck not not skill just literally luck rode it down the grass i was like flip it slippy this and then the very next lap i crashed just a bit further around the track Mm -hmm. hadn't set a lap time in qualifying so i was 17th on the grid taron had also done the same so he was 18th he didn't set a time at all and you know i was just i was like in the gravel going flip you know like i and i literally i was like this track is ridiculous it can't be it must be me, my bike, my setup, me as a rider. Like I'd hardly touched the throttle and it just went, Whoop! you know, and I'd, a lap before I'd crashed on and nearly crashed on an out lap. It was like, man, this is horrendous. In the gravel, bikes bent to bits. It wasn't a big, massive crash, but it seemed to do a lot of damage. Yeah, um, one of those. So I'm back in the caravan, um, changing the airbags over into a new suit and stuff like that. And just thinking, oh man, you know, like this is, maybe this is where it's gone wrong. You know, like this is it. Like, no confidence in the bike. It just couldn't feel anything. <clears throat> Got back. They fixed it beautifully. Uh, set off on the sighting lap to go to the grid. Nearly crashed on the sighting lap. Like, nearly didn't even make it to the grid. In fact, I think Skinner didn't make it to the grid on that race because it was, you know, that's how treacherous conditions were. You would literally just fall off. It's it was just, the weirdest thing. Wait, I, crashed, say, I crashed that uh, that weekend. Did you? Well, so everyone was talking about, like, the fact that it needs re And Do you agree with, like, everyone was just... Yeah, well, actually, to be fair... a lot of fa- people screaming about it, weren't they? To but be Gino fair... Gino Rio wasn't. He was... No, well, he was flying, but <laughs> the um, BSB did send out... Um, What's going on? BSB sent out a, a piece of paper and asked us to say where needs re And for me, it was everywhere bar one corner. Which was? Uh, coming out of Foggy's S's was fine. Yeah, right? it was, yeah. It was meant there. Oh, see? Yeah. Mm. I'm not wrong. There mm. you go, Stuart, if you're listening. I crashed the same as uh, Buchan. <laughs> so, do you know, on the brakes into um, the hairpin. Yeah, oh, so, you, like, did that... you see that race? It, it was like it was like he was touring, and then these last was it the last lap? Oh, bit? Yes, yeah, I got lo- loads of pace in the last just, few laps, and it then was went just down like put, that was literally the expression of pulling the pin, and it was just like, oh my, mm-hmm. you, mate, it was outstanding. But that, but that's how bad can it when you see so many people crashing in a straight like there were straight line crashes. Literally, yeah. there's nothing you can do. You just mm-hmm. pull the brakes, and just there's, you can't get the transfer because there's no feeling, and just oof. It's that's mad it. when when you think though, like after if you'd your mindset after qualifying if you then said you're going to get three podiums <laughs> well, you'd have just exactly like, no so that's what happened so i've pulled up to the grid i was like boys i've just nearly crashed you know like i nearly didn't make it to the, to the grid i've just nearly crashed again i was sat there in 17th on the grid which is god knows what row that is you know and i'm like thinking this is just horrendous i didn't almost didn't even want to i always want to race but you know like i was like this is literally just got to get through it or do whatever set off and literally just bimbled around the first corner. And as we came out the first corner, everyone in front of me, which is basically everybody, had like a moment, you know, like they all sort of lost the rear. Nobody fell off, but they all like, and we're all going like walking pace. It was like the good slow races. It was, it was a laughable really. <laughs> but the fact that everyone had a moment, I was like, mint. We're Everyone's all in this together. Mm-hmm. And that was like a moment of realization because I hadn't done qualifying with everyone because I only lasted half a lap. And, you know, I, I thought, oh, the track must be better for them and not me. You know, like, it's the setup or it's my, the way I'm riding or whatever. Literally, that first corner, I was like, oh, everyone's the same. Yeah. Now, the only person that didn't understand was the uh, Bill Bay Suzuki had a Japanese rider on. And he came past me down Craner. Like, I was like, I was cheering him on. I was going, go on, lad. Like, he'd done two people in <laughs> the old hairpin, two more going up up the up Schwantz or whatever it is. I was this. like, what a legend. You know, like, he is going to win by a country mile or crash. Yeah, he crashed, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he didn't even make a lap, um, but he didn't realize what it was like. So, um, yeah, got third in that one. Next race was a dry one, got third in that. And then the last race was wet again. And myself, uh, Gino, and Lee Bob had 
really don't know what happened, but we cleared off to such an extent that we had like 40 seconds on fourth place or yeah, something. It was massive. ridiculous. <laughs> but what I actually think was uh, Gino set the pace. Gino rode unbelievable that weekend. Myself and Lee set off after him. And I think we're the only ones that got enough heat in the tyres that our tyres were working completely different to everyone else's. So I think once you got them to a certain point, they kind of worked. Yeah. And I think our three lots of tyres were the only ones. Jesus. I, 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 that's the only explanation I can give of it because it was literally, to me, it was like riding a different track, even though conditions were comparable to the first race. Yeah. But that put me within 15 points going into the last round. Mm. So it was a massive, massive weekend. So, um, and then obviously last round, strong, strong weekend. And obviously, like we've talked about, the big, a uh, big crash in the final one. Uh, I, Taz, think, I think we can upgrade it from big. Yeah, I massive. It was, uh, Ta- who, it was Ta- uh, biblical. Taz came on extremely strong at the right time in the championship and obviously uh, took this, took the championship in style at the last, the last round. So, um, sort of hats, hats off to him, mm-hmm. really. He, mm-hmm. he, he did the business. Um in terms, I, there was a question I was going to ask you earlier. In the mid-season, so uh, it was around the sort of Cadwell and Donington time, Ryan Vickers looked like he was really sort of coming into his own in the superbike, mm-hmm. really strong at Donington. There was that one way, like, started at the back of the grid and, like, rode fantastic to come, like, within a second of the win. And uh, obviously at Cadwell when he did that faster slap. Mm-hmm. And, and for Thrux, someone that's... Did he get on the podium at Thrux? No, I don't think he's ever had a podium. No, I was just about oh, to say no, no, podium, it? sorry. He's, for someone that's that had, had so much pace and is, like, fastest two-wheel lap at uh, Cadwell, it's, it's mad that he hasn't yet had a podium. Mm-hmm. Um from being on track with them, do you, like, did you, I mean, you must have been impressed with the lap time at Cadwell, but like sort of seeing him on track at, um, at Donington, do you feel like he's, do you think he has got something special on the superbike or do you think he's taken like big risks in like places where other people don't want to take them and therefore it's like, it's not uh, paying dividends in the races or? Uh, again, I don't really like to critique other riders because I don't think it's overly fair, but um, yeah, Ryan's, Obviously, supremely talented, and yeah, some of the lap times that he puts in are unbelievable. Mm. Um, I mean, I think for me, the one in one race I was involved with him in was the Thruxton race, um, or one of the Thruxton races. Must have been the last one, the first first race when I got on the podium. Whichever one it was, he was so fast. Um, uh, came up the inside of me at the last chicane and took us both across the chicane. He then got a ride through or you know that long lap penalty for it still came through and you know got back up into a podiumish position and then lost the front on the last lap and it's yeah. just you know and you just think dude if you'd have just chilled out for the whole race you probably could have won that mm-hmm. you know like but he was overly aggressive at the wrong points and <clears throat> yeah I, I don't know he's he's obviously supremely fast mm-hmm. and talented um so it's, it's probably one of those things as well do you know if he had got that podium it would have probably like yeah chilled him out yeah, and he, he could have ended up exactly. like the rest of the season could have looked yeah. a, like a lot different for him I, yeah. it, it, I think he rides in a slightly different way he runs different amounts of corner speed to a few other people i did listen to uh, i can't remember what he was on but i listened to something um and he was saying that you know, one of his strong points and he, he doesn't understand why other people don't go that fast in certain places. But I think there's a reason why most of the rest of the field do things quite the same. So um, you're trying to ride it more like a 600? And no, no, no. I'm just thinking, possibly, you, know, you know, when you're talking uh, yeah. about corner speed, because well, we had Lee Hardy on, he was talking about like corner speed and trying to make a big bike mm-hmm. handle more like a 600 mm-hmm. and how that adaptation, why can't you make that word work? Mm-hmm. Sorry. And I think that makes a lot of sense, but... There's a reason why all you lads ride them yeah. like big bikes, isn't yeah. it? And it's... His style would probably be better, to be fair, in a European sort of scenario or not on yeah, Pirelli this... tyres, I think, because I, I think his corner speed style and flowing style yeah. works different for different scenarios. Mm. But for the current mm. BSB rules, maybe it's not quite suited to him just yet. Yeah. No, no, no. It's no, it's interesting, isn't it? But like, I mean, like, he's flipping fast, and like oh, you God, say, uh, yeah. the fact that he's not yet scored a podium um, is quite incredible, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Given the pace that he's got, I mean, that lap at Cadwell. But again, it sort of maybe shows the mentality that after, you know, he set that time, and a bit like we were talking about before, you always feel like he can go more. But yeah. you know, like you've just set the fastest ever two wheel lap round the most technically demanding circuit in the country, and you're sort of saying, ah, I can go faster. You know, like. Maybe yeah. just be, 
you content. take it and content yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> just be content do 20 more of them in the race and you'll you know it's that's fine mm-hmm. um imagine yeah. saying imagine saying that just do 20 of them son yeah i know problem is <laughs> but no he you know he's a he's a talented lad and yeah, for sure figures who he's on with next year or anything like that because it, it's i'll tell you what that's the thing about this time of year isn't it it's just it's almost too quiet any sea's coming up you think uh-huh. what's people doing you think and come on get Let's just get the ball rolling. Mm-hmm. Can we just end the suspense where people are... It's just that triage system, isn't it? You think, who's where? And then it just goes off. And I mean, like, it, you, it, it usually filters down, doesn't it? You know, you usually wait for... I mean, last year, it was you, you sort of wait for your Brooksy to... Yeah, of course to, do, yeah. To take his place wherever that'll be. And then it sort of filters down and yes. everyone sort of goes down the hierarchy of mm-hmm. riders have slash you, teams. Have you yeah, got any is, juicy, yeah. juicy uh, gossip for the rumour mill? I don't think any I inside finish. information. Not that I can say. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> have, uh, have you got any? Um, I've heard McGuinness is going to Honda. Yeah, I heard a That's bit of a rumor with that. He, he was on Manx Radio, and his reference was. Old I'm going slippers. to Honda. <laughs> yeah, get that. I wonder what gave it away, Christian. I wonder, no, a, yeah, they're like going to Honda. He might be on a car. I don't know, but it's a case of that's what like Manx Radio. Yeah. You can actually hear it in like um, the good thing about that website is they actually put the clip on. You know, right. the, the audible side of it. He's like, yeah, maybe getting back into old slippers and thinking, well, it's definitely not fucking Norton. <laughs> put it that way. You know what I mean? So um, that's what I've heard on the rumor mill that he's going back to Honda, which will be interesting. Yeah, which yeah. will be interesting. Well, it'll be interesting just to have the road side back to be fair my mm. god you're not wrong on that side of things but no as far as rumour mill um, I don't know enough and it's doing me head in you know what I mean I don't know who's sitting where who's doing what I think, I think from the BSB side of thing I think it'll <clears throat> make a big difference when um, McCams and PBM announce yeah. their stable and then yeah. I think everything falls into place a lot quicker but I mean we've already seen that Honda have announced theirs which is mm-hmm. yeah Tom Neves fantastic I, th- I honestly think there should be a rule where if you yeah. win the feeder class you get a 100% and, or feeder classes mm-hmm. you get a promotion 100% because otherwise there's no point in feeder classes so yep yeah, amen to that I did, I'm really glad to see when a team brings up the rider yeah yes that has done the job and fully deserves a shot. Mm-hmm. Like I was about to say, who can we confirm at the moment? So we've got Glenn Irwin, uh, the two Japanese lads. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to try and pronounce their names for love of money. But um, Tom Neve. Mm-hmm. Who else have we got? We've got Pete Hickman yeah. on the Feho. Um, OMG. OMG, yeah. yes. We just switched Ray. to Yams. Yeah, Kyle and... Which could be really interesting because yeah. I do think that the specifically the style of the way Kyle rides, but also Brad, that could really suit them mm-hmm. a right. lot. There we are then. Mm-hmm. That way, and it'll be interesting to see what their take is to the the roads element. Do they keep with the BMWs and uh, give yeah, them? Never the, thought of that, no, no, because you got Dave O. Johnson and um, yeah. oh, James Hillier. Mm-hmm. Now the good thing about Alan is he commits to his lads. You know what I mean? He puts his time, puts his effort in. But you're thinking, are the lads going on BMWs or mm. Yamahas? When are um, yeah. when are PM, PBM looking to announce the rider lineup, or is that like I, mean, no I really don't know? But they just seem to hold everything. Lee Hardy hasn't announced. Mm. You know what I mean? It's a bit like you know. Uh, they, they... I did. I did hear that Lee's potentially running two riders, which would be nice. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Has he ever done that? Uh, yeah, he had Jack Kennedy. Uh, and, yes, um... not for a full season, but he did put a bike out for Kennedy. There's mm. another rider. What's Jack Kennedy doing? Forty-five minutes in. We've got another. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a proper inside joke between us three. I think we should just leave it at that. There we go. So, um, so Jack, can it? I, I'm breaking summit here, right? Any, but anyway, sorry, it's my foot, my bloody voice on the microphone. So, what's Jack Kennedy doing? Won the British Super Sport. Haven't heard zip. Yeah, Jack has one of sort of them yo-yo sort of careers, doesn't he? Where he sort of. Back to super sport, up to super bike, back to super sport, up to super what, bike, sort of thing. But th- it, what, what a rider, mate. Oh, Jesus, yeah, yeah, 100%. Well, Jesus, he did an awesome wet. job on the 636 this year because it definitely mm-hmm. wasn't uh, the, it was as competitive as the... No, didn't seem to be sixes. the bike. No, and uh, in terms of straight line speed, certainly, even compared to Ben Curry, Ben Curry tried to ride the 636 and uh, didn't get anywhere near the mm-hmm. winning races <laughs> on it. So, yeah, he did an awesome job. He's yeah. off to world super sport. Off mm. to world super sport. There you are. And, like, will he be taking money to that? I don't know. That's a problem. Yeah. Now the problem is, right? When I first, when we, when we first started doing this podcast, I thought the whole world is rainbows and belly <laughs> pops, and you went fast, you got some money, and you went racing bikes. Now this podcast has single handedly ruined my dreams, and now you have to take money everywhere. So you now just I haven't yet listened will... to the Toesland one, but I heard that that was a topic of conversation in it. That when he started, he was 
earning so much money for yeah. being in a thing and now obviously he was involved with Danny Webb and that and now riders have to take X amount but to the at, team rather mm. than the other way around. But that's mm. what I heard about Mackenzie. He was having to take money. He's just won the British title in superbikes. Mm. Right, yeah, son. I want X amount of pounds for you to, to come race to my team. Said, so af- after he was running a... I think he went straight from a CBR 600. No, uh, um... The CB 500. 500. Mm-hmm. So when he was 17 year old, he got taken on by Castrol Honda. Yeah. So he didn't know the tracks or anything. So first year with an unknown rider in World Super Sport, and he, he, I think he said he was on 30 grand then. Se- yeah, 17 year old. Which are- 20 years ago. And you're yeah. 15 going, years ago. And you're hanging around with Matt Lee, knocking in fence posts and losing <laughs> fingers, son. 100 you know quid a day. They are. Mm. Over, yeah, over 20, <laughs> over 20 years ago. Oh, I charge well. I want to. Uh, hello, Matt, if you are listening, which you will be. Yeah, any jobs going Now, uh, a quick, another topic of uh, that I need to ask you about is last year, really enjoyed the old uh, Christian in Fitness program. Is it, is it <laughs> making club. a return? Fat club. Fat club. Fat is club. it making a return this year? <clears throat> I think it will, actually. I, I wasn't sure whether to do it or not. Um, but was, yeah. When we start in January or? I think January. I was going to do a December, but uh, I'm not going to. Right. <laughs> and if uh, I'm going to come up with a really good excuse and I can't. I just... <laughs> people, people need to enjoy Christmas. And, well, actually, it was going to be so you can enjoy Christmas. It was get really skinny so you can get really fat <laughs> for a week and then get skinny again. What, um, for people that want to join it, what's to be best? Fair, to be fair, though, I just went on the, you know, like, we've just been on our, been to... It's not a honeymoon, but it was. You know, mm. like we went to Cyprus, went on to them all. Sorry, how do you not go on a honeymoon and not? Because we were supposed to go a bit further afield, right. was, but then <laughs> with everything that's going on, it was easier not to go too far in case something kicks off. And went to all inclusive. I've never done all inclusive before. Oh, that is dangerous. Mm. You've been... It was fine until I realised you're allowed to go back. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice, nice and ice that, cream. That was a game changer. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, my, my, my favourite thing ever about like an all exclusive um, was um, Macau, right? Basically, you know, like a sweet and sour chicken with egg fried rice. That's what they have for breakfast. You're having a takeaway <laughs> every morning. You're like, oh, God, this is outstanding. <laughs> Click, buy, deliver. With remote purchasing from the two time motorcycle news dealer of the year, Colchester Kawasaki. Proud sponsors of Chasing the Racing. Yes, yeah, so all inclusive is not the future mid season. Mm. <laughs> and um, so we're just br- waiting for the microphone to blow up again. Aren't <laughs> yeah, we? we're bring- bringing that back in uh, January. If yeah. people want to sign up, how do they do? Just keep checking my socials, and I will put something up, and then you'll just have to message me, and it'll just be fun. You know, the last one was just fun. It's it's <clears throat> people get worried and think that I'm gonna kill him that's not the idea Beast it's, by, by, yeah by the, the, way, the, the plan is that everyone's different and got their own goals and i'm just there to be supportive and have a good time bear in mind if you are on the edge of a cardiac arrest do not sign up because <laughs> christian will single-handedly finish you off not no a but it's not you know chrissy you did some of them didn't you and, yeah you know it, well, it, it is well. literally do as much as you can because everyone's different so i try to make it make it all so it's not like you have to do x of these and x yes. of those because that doesn't work mm-hmm. you know everyone's different so and the, and also there's always up op- like a hard option an easy option mm-hmm. so like anyone could have yeah i tried to give like three options for each movement so those with yeah. issues can switch around yeah so just check my socials the plan is to hopefully do it in january a bit of a and if it's not all about the fitness, bear in mind you've got you've adopted a lovely little dog called uh, Tyne. Tyne, right? F- I was crying the other day. Basically, the dog was struggling to have a shite, right? <laughs> I got wrong for putting that uh, up mate, on the internet. Mate, don't you dare get told off again. You've got to keep putting <laughs> things on like that. So basically, the dog's struggling like mad, right? The dog's... It's hanging, right? And he's literally put quotations underneath going, I'm not picking it up, mate. <laughs> like, well, he's not to... picking it up. He's trying to pull the thing out. <laughs> was... So the dog had been eating grass because they, they eat grass, don't they, when they want to... I don't know why they eat grass. It, it had eaten grass. Yes. So obviously the, it had done half a poop, but there was still a bit of grass left in its <laughs> belly and half it hanging out with this massive cling on. So she... <laughs> So I was trying to hit it with a stick to try and get it off, and I couldn't. And then, but it was as long as a leg. She's only a little terrier, so she had this extra leg that was flipping, hitting her from side to side. Oh, bless her. oh it was horrendous. I was crying at it, man. I got in trouble for putting that up. Who, who off the missus? Off the boss, yeah. Off the boss. The boss. There we go, Grad. But honestly, it was I said so it's dumb. your dog. I'd, I was absolutely howling, mate. I was absolutely howling. I can just see, like, like any concerned human, like I got. I'll film this. <laughs> 
<laughs> so we've got a, a few quick uh, Patreon questions. Uh, oh. First one, Dewey Williams. Uh, what mileage does he do on a push bike a year? Follow him on Strava and his rides are... And like that emoji. <laughs> do, uh, can you? Can anyone just follow you on Strava? Yeah, uh, I have to accept your request, but I don't. There's no. I don't turn anyone down. Oh, so I don't know. Why I have you accepted slack. that. So if people are on Strava, if they just type Christian in, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, Same nice. one. Actually, I'd spend a bit of time on Zwift, which is the indoor cycling app as well. Mm. I quite like those sort of things because it's that's nice to give a bit of a you give a ride on. That's how it is. Yeah. Also, that's nice. Any, any, anyone can jump on. Yeah, you can sort of you. interact and you see oh, you see cool. people and you just you know it's cool. There we go. Yeah. So if and, anyone wants to join in and uh, so I'm up to I'm up to seventeen and a half thousand kilometers this year. Jesus, oh, that's good going, I don't know what that is in miles. Have uh-huh. you ever considered you actually have the most talked about testicles in the podcast? <laughs> you know what I mean? Because everyone who comes up and chats just, about this podcast love the podcast. Just over ten thousand. Like Christian is it miles? balls frozen. Hilarious. <laughs> everyone, like, you, you have the most talk talk about testicles in the mm. podcast. It's fact. Nice. Digest that and let me know how you feel about it later on. <laughs> so good. at least I'm talked about. <laughs> Um, we've got Shirley Bimpson. Firstly, congratulations on your wedding to Nicola. Please, the, now here it says, pleased to hear you are staying with PBM for 2022. What's the plan of attack for next year? But as we've spoke about, that's uh, not confirmed yet. No, not confirmed yet. Um, <clears throat> I don't really know what I can say, to be yeah, fair. fair Birdie, enough, Birdie um, had said on the tannoy at Brands yeah. that we're staying, mm-hmm. myself and Josh. So... But as it stands right now, I don't really know what's occurring. Right, fair enough. Um, and we've got a congrats on taking the fight for BSB twenty twenty one all the way to the end. Even better next year. You've got you've gone from dirt to al- asphalt so successfully. Uh, but how do you approach as differ, Tar? Um, it's a good question. To be fair, I don't think the approach changes too much, does it? I mean, a race is a race. The way I saw it when I first changed was. It was a bit like going from badminton to tennis. Mm-hmm. You know, like you've got a court, you've got a racket, you've got a ball or a shuttly thing. It's kind of the same game, but a little bit different. Different technique. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's how I approached it. And I must thank you, by the way. I went and did Metty. Amazing, isn't it? Uh, mate, outstanding. Fantastic. Yeah, was first time for me on a supermoto bike. Absolutely. I did see it. some pictures, actually. I did see you looked all right. It looked all right. He's... Bullshit. I look shy compared to you lot, but there you go. I absolutely loved it. Absolutely loved it. Um, I can't. I, I really want to go do a British... I made that sound really cocky there. No, I'd like to go do a British round to see I've done it kind of thing. In oh, this you'd country. you'd, easily, but you'd be competitive, no bother whatsoever. Um, yeah, so the, the British Supermoto Championship is... It's basically there is only one club, so the British is club racing as well as British. Yeah. So there's a class for everyone in it anyway, so right. it's not the end of the world. Um. Yeah, and you'd be competitive enough. There's the full spectrum from like entry level. Exactly. To the, the best uh, yeah, that's what I mean. So yeah, yeah. going oh. to British isn't like going to BSB terms or do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So you you'd be fine. But Dean Livesey, um, DC racing, he's been loaning me a 450. So I wonder if I can slide some supermoto wheels on that thing just to see how I get cool. on with it. That would be a crack. Now, Dean, if you're listening, cheers, mate. <laughs> we've got for people that are watching on uh, YouTube. Do you want to talk? This is the uh, quite. Uh, this is the first one in the world. What they do you, what, what so do you think? I was admiring it. They are so uh, flash from TT cases. There, he's, uh, he's put his put his thinking hat together. There's a lot and, of uh, hardware that, on that thing. There's a lot. Impressive. There's some mighty weight about that, my man. But uh, no, it's um, so we've got some new Dom the Bomb hats. And um, well, well, actually, I need to put the order. There you go. So Christian Inn is modelling it here, ladies and gentlemen. There you go. I can't actually afford for it's him. It's a bit warm in here. I don't think I need it. But... <laughs> good man. There you are. There you go. That's, that's good. Cool. It? it looks I tell you. Wait, that, that's that's actually stem part there. Stem. stem don't yeah, like it. Yeah, <laughs> hey, let's, uh, let's not branch out too many of these <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> Chip off the old block and all Let's that. Let's leave it there. <laughs> Surely this is going to stem into a different conversation. Oh my god, here we go. So no, like that. You're such there. a sap. <laughs> I've got nowhere to go with this now. I've got nowhere to go with this. On that note, buy a hat. <laughs> are you, are you so, selling them? Yeah, so the idea is I'm going to get an order in. So um, no, Flash has kindly sorted that out. Um, How much are they? 
I have no idea. Oh, okay. that, I lit- that is from Jana. Um, so I have no idea how much it is, but I'm over the moon because you have to pay for like a sample, get mm-hmm. it chipped over and like I say, flash So if people want them, do they just message you? Or? Uh, mate, I haven't even got that far down the, the road. I've literally got it out of your kitchen where it's got poster to and then it's now I'm, right. Chris, it, it's escalated rapidly to be fair. Christian didn't got it on and Speaking banging of w- out puns. And- Woolly hat, we've got you a little present there, Christian. Oh that's, yes. That's for the winter. Keep it's you- coming into the season. That's the one. Keep your looks. So, keep thank your looks you. Warm. Million <laughs> million miles there. There we go. Fantastic. So what what else have we what else have we got? Right. The irritating thing about this show is that we speak in the future and the past, blah 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 blah. This weekend, new track, World Superbikes, mm-hmm. top racks currently pissing off into the di- well hold on am I correct in saying he's pissing off no, did an FP1 did an so FP1 by the time this podcast goes out Sunday night so the the championship will have been decided so when Just. people are listening yeah when people are listening to this but uh, as we record this a bit like that time when I said Mark Marcus was never going to win another race and he won the next weekend at Saxon Ring <laughs> I should have admitted Saxon <gasps> Ring or America. I should have said discount. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, FP... No, no, let's not ruin it. What's your prediction? <laughs> no, I just want to know if this yeah. is going to be like a set thing from now on. After FP1 and FP2, um, so Top Rack annihilated everyone in FP1, but then really close in FP2. I think Johnny missed half of FP1 through like mm. some mechanical problem, but he was within a tenth and a half yeah. in FP2. So it's basically, that you know, there's a 30-odd point lead, I think, that, uh, difference between Top Rack and Johnny. Jonathan, um, all things being well, uh, Top Rack should should bring bring back the championship. But obviously, with more by grace, and anything can happen. Mm-hmm. If say Top Rack crashes in the first one, Jonathan wins. It's game on. Um, but the the most likely situation is Top Rack will win. Yeah, pretty much where I see it. To be fair, thirty points is sizable, especially uh, World Superbike. Yeah, they have three races, but the middle one's half points race, so it's not seventy five like it would be at a BSB weekend. It's Whatever it is, mm-hmm. uh, 50, 60, 65 or something, 62 and a half. Yeah, 62 and a half, yeah. So <clears throat> to, to do a half point swing, basically, he needs to score double the points is what Top Rack could potentially score. It's not easy, mm. especially given that those two are not, not that the head and shoulders above, you know, like Scott can be there, Gerloff can be there, Locatelli can be there. But within reason, you can't see either Johnny or Top Rack in a normal race finishing outside the top five or six. Mm-hmm. So, would you would you have liked to have, or it could pot- it, pot- it could potentially <laughs> still happen? But um, would you like to see Taron McKenzie in World Superbikes next year? I'd love to. Yeah, I would really love to. I, <clears throat> I think um, the, our current crop of this is only a personal opinion, but I think our current crop of World Superbike riders has been there for quite a long time. Mm. Yeah. Um, so it'd be nice to see some freshness going in there. Taron, a bit like what I said about Superstock should get a promotion up to Superbike. I think it would be nice to see a promotion from BSB to World Superbike or somewhere else, you know, like mm. <clears throat> if Taron stays, um, not I feel sorry for him, but I think yeah. that's a shame. It is a massive shame. In my opinion. Yeah. I know, I, t- I totally agree with that. It is like you just want to see that natural yeah. progression. You need to dangle the carrot for yeah. career riders. And, and, and the rumour is that he's probably staying. And certainly at the point that he's at in his career, you know, he's reasonably young. So he going, moving and moving soon is imperative, In I think. Yeah, of course it is. Mm-hmm. Especially after what you've, you've achieved yeah. this year. So, yeah, it's a shame. Um, especially because it seems like there's a few Brits going out of it. And I do think we needed to lose a few Brits out of World Superbike to open it up. Yeah. As a more multinational championship, because I think it's been a bit too British, British heavy. Yeah. It's a bit like how MotoGP is a bit Italian Spanish heavy. I think you know, mm. World Superbike's a bit too Brit heavy. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, with a few moving out potentially, it would have been really nice to see Taron step up. Yeah. It's mad when you think as well, internationally, you would, like, say if you were Spanish, you'd probably look at World Superbikes and you'd think, oh, it's I'm Brit not heavy. British enough. You'd probably think it's Brit heavy, <laughs> therefore it's going to be, like, massive, a massive sport in Britain and, like, everyone's going to be... Yeah, and it's not. And, it, it, yeah, if you look at, like, say, when World Superbikes is at, say, Donington, the attendance is uh-huh. lower than a BSB round, it's, yeah. it's not really, like... I mean, it is. It's quite strongly followed but i wouldn't say like particularly strong i do i do like um actually i think world two bike in the last couple of years has really upped its game definitely i think they've really done a good job bringing in different riders from a few different championships i think redden's got a fair bit to sort of t- uh thank for that mm-hmm. um i think he brought something to the championship yeah 
And I think even media wise, they've up they've upped their game that way. I think the production values are. It, I know it's all little things, but it adds up massively. You know, World Two Bike always the production values always seemed dead poor previously. Yeah. You know, it was just like <laughs> like like I'd put it together on my laptop or something. You know, like it was just like really. Yeah. Now it's it's slick. Mm, um, yeah. And the depth of field is improving. Not, I don't ever think that the rider depth of field was a problem, but I think the bike depth of field made it look weak. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, because there was such a difference in bikes that if you're on a good one, no matter how good or bad you are, that's fine. And if you're on a bad one, no matter how good or bad you are, you're out the back door. I've, anyway. Yeah, I've, I've just thought as well, since you've last been on the podcast, you've, uh, you've headlined the Eurosport couch. Yeah, and uh, I've got to say as well, like obviously it's like something most people would find a bit out of the comfort zone doing something like that, being like in the middle of the city, sort of to discuss world tour bikes. You were like so at ease, and like you, you did boss it. You did a great job. I'm not being um, funny, but four times on the show, Chris. Yeah, you it's know all this I mean? experience. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> You're gonna build me next, aren't you? <laughs> Work experience. Yeah. But, don't worry, the invoice is already in the post. The second you pulled up on the drive, it's, it's uh, delivered. How was the experience? Did you enjoy it? Fantastic. Yeah. I really enjoyed enjoyed the whole thing i mean like you know how could you not you i watched motorbikes and then i talked about motorbikes and then they give you some dosh at the end of it and put you up in a nice hotel you know like what's not to like literally it's a, a we're fantastic going, we're going wrong chrissy no honestly it's a, it is and i really enjoyed it and yeah. probably made probably made all the better by the fact that um matt roberts is i don't you call it, guess the anchor man or whatever you know i, th- I think it's the anchor man it yeah but so a personable a great bloke puts he put me at ease because i think he you know it's them little cues he knows what goes on so he sort of knows how to give you not the wink but you know like so you know that you're going to talk next or yeah whatever it is you know because it's not simple and <clears throat> you know you have a you have the earpiece in and you have someone talking in your ear and i only had one person talking in my ear and then between one of the things they said oh do you want to hear what matt hears so I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, crack on. And honestly, like the amount of things going on in his he- earpiece as he's doing a piece to camera, you know, the he say, you know, they're talking in his ear going like, what's coming up next? You know, like you need to talk about the Roland Garros and it's going to be on Eurosport 2 at whatever time and you've got three seconds to do it. And it's, you know, and they're counting him, de- someone else is counting him in and someone else is counting him into the next one, you know, like, and he's got four people in. And like when they, when they did it to me, I was just listening and thinking, I need to say something. You know, like, because you, you can't process, it's, it's yeah, incredible. Not. And at the same time, you're on camera speaking about something, yeah. taking that information in, but without, like... Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's, it's it's a really impressive skill. So, yeah, I think it was made even more enjoyable by Matt being, putting me at ease. I was on there with Hayden, who's, you know, a good fella. Um, so, yeah, it was a really, really enjoyable experience and something I would really like to do again. They did actually offer me a chance again. Um, but we were we were at Guy's uh, motocrossing, so I couldn't do it that weekend. Um, Have you seen that, the track by, recently? <laughs> amazing. By, by the way, this is a stag do he's talking about, so something was pretty crucial. It wasn't like you were just nipped down the road. You know, <laughs> no, yeah, no. So, oh, yeah, so. yeah, no, I'd already, I was already committed to uh, the, stag doing. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I would... It was something... It was... I hope I get the chance again, because I really enjoyed it. Yeah. it. It's nice. Like I said, you, you watch motorbikes and you talk about it. What Honestly, what could be better than that? Yeah. There we are. Mega. Well, um, I've sort of wrapped up all of my questions. Have you, have you got anything? Um, no. Congratulations. Oh, hey, what I... about the end of? Have you spoke about MotoGP? No, I've not wrapped up MotoGP. Oh. I'd, do you know? We've I had the end watch... of a season. Yeah. Uh, end... Go on. Because you, you watched the MotoGP thing from last week, didn't you? I watched it. Yeah. Yeah. I've I haven't I've missed the last few MotoGPs. I've been like out doing various things and mm, I haven't really networking. caught up. Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. You're, like your your hero is like you didn't watch his last race. Uh, no, I was actually I... flat tracking uh, on that race. I did watch it on catch up, uh-huh. and like you've got yeah, we can't not mention it. Like obviously Rossi's last uh, last ever Grand Prix is like proper. Yeah. For, honestly, for me, like I know it's a bit sad, but since since Rossi hasn't had a chance of been like on the podium Mm -hmm. ever since then for me like it's like massively lost something i mean what 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 made it um they had stoner on at the weekend um commentating and punditing and well he's he knows the score doesn't he so what i quite liked about stone i didn't like most of his stuff but what i did like he's very honest and abrupt he's kind of not in it seems like he's not into racing at all anymore and he was quite honest about that they were like do you watch it anymore no (laughs) <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, this will be a good rest of the weekend. 
he didn't obviously have any earpieces. You know, I'm not excited. No, so like, no. Good, good, good. Um, but yeah, when you when you think of things like you know, he's one thing that just struck home was he said, oh, "I used to watch Rossi as a, as I was coming up through the ranks, and then Jesus. did my thing, and then raced against him, and then retired, and has been retired for." You know, Stone has been retired a fair few years, and if you think you know, Stone watched him at his at his height, or at least when he was coming in his ascendancy, Rossi that is, and then you know, other riders have started their career, done it, and then gone back out again. And they were going the amount of riders in MotoGP today that weren't even born when Rossi started his first race in MotoGP or 500s, whenever it was back then. So, you know, it was like half the field weren't even born or whatever it was. It was Jesus. ridiculous. H- how damaging, in your opinion, lads, is it going to be for motorcycle racing? Every man and his dog across the planet has heard of Valentino Rossi. You know what I mean? He's, mm-hmm. he's like the Nicky... He's, he's the he's loud... He's new Barry he's Sheen, like, isn't he? We're not even... He's bigger than Barry Sheen. You know what I mean? He's such an iconic name in mm-hmm. sport, not yeah. motorsport, in sport in general. Can you say a bit of like the huge uh, boots to fill, aren't they? They're massive, but in think, the same breath, like, do you think that's going to be a little bit more damaging to motorsport now that he's gone? Well, I think yeah. there's two things at play. One is the fact that Marquez is currently a bit unsure because he's hurt him. Well, his eyes got a problem again, which is an old injury from I think ten years ago. Mm. So he's even already they're talking that he's in doubt for next season. So those sort of injuries, you don't know. It's not a bone. It's not a something that. I mean, I don't know the ins and outs of it, but it seems like it's one of them that... Telescopes, one, yeah. yeah. And and maybe one day I'll wake up, wake up and, it, and it's gone, or maybe one day I'll wake up and it won't be gone. So I don't really know. I'm sure they're trying to fix it, but, you know, that could be a big... What's it? So, <clears throat> obviously, Marquez is a, such a huge profile as well, and a quite a strong character, because you sort of need those strong characters. I think that's the shame for, like, Juan May never really, I don't believe, got the the adoration or accolades because he's a more quiet character than he, he won. He, the, the quiet world champion you know like yeah but if you but, say Juan Mir to most people it'll go over the head but as you say Rossi of course it's a completely different thing yeah John or Marquez a completely different thing so if, if they lose Rossi and Marquez I think that could be a difficult thing massive blow at the sport yeah Huge. the only other way to think of it is um, to think positively and you go well Rossi has brought the motorcycling into a whole new realm that's what i mean so let's just be appreciative of what he's brought to it and even if it does start to decline decline it was never at that point before him anyway so if he never existed think of it as if he never existed then it would already be lower oh 100 so you've not lost you've no, no, gained but we, we 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 will think like that we are this is beyond you know rossi for us this is how we yeah. want to live our lives we are incredibly biased even if we're trying not to be that that's a period fact but you're trying to think of Bobby, who only likes going for a couple of pints kind of thing, uh-huh. thinks, you know what I mean? It's that kind of... That, that, uh, it's that, is Bobby going to multiply because he hasn't got... A well, that is the thing, like, you know, you know, you, if you talk to someone that you've never met, you meet someone in the... Not in the pub, because I don't drink, but, you know, you twice meet someone a, oh, somewhere... Second, twice a year. Twice yeah. a year, I, I go to the pub and I say... <laughs> and they and they go, oh, what do you do? And I go, oh, I race motorbikes. And they go, oh, do you know Rossi? You know, that's like... That's what I mean. That, that's exactly <laughs> it, though, isn't it? They don't say, do you know Pecco Bagnaia? <laughs> do they? No, well, you... Uh, like how we chop the name drop in there, it's like we don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's it, it's that thing about like not real bike fans, but just people who yes, the everyday. Follow That's it. what yeah. I mean. You know, it's. I tell you what, got a good. I, I, I read a stat actually, and I'm going to see if either of you can answer it. So there's only one rider in the Rossi's entire career in the top flight, so 500s or MotoGP, how whichever one it is. There's only one rider who's Rossi's. Never beaten. Oh, there's a question, a mine question. kids. There'll be people listening to this on the road pulling over. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Was it? Uh... I think it was this year. Oh, this year. I think it was this year. That's not a bad shout. Actually, you were going to say Bayliss, weren't you? I was. Yeah, he did that very one good shout. Didn't he? Did he do more? He did more though, didn't he? He did a season, didn't he? Right. Okay. Um, I like the idea though. Mm, he's the only one I could. Uh, so Do you know the answer, this... by the way? Yeah. Thank God, because the way you're... There's one right... It's going to be a pretty damp uh, squid yeah. if at the I end of it I go, well, no, I don't I mean either. That's what I mean. I'm thinking, I'm like, I know. I'm thinking, how the hell are we going to get around this? Is it like one of the rookies from this year? It's a stand-in rider. <clears throat> and I think it, Martin? And I think it was Asin. Nap. 
No, I'm, I'm, I haven't really I followed remember, much GP that I cannot remember. Gerloff. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, okay. Garrett Gerloff's the only person Valentin Rossi's never beaten because I think Gerloff only did one race or two races. I would have that framed. And he beat him. Well, I've never got beaten by Valentino Rossi. <laughs> They are. Get it framed. Have you... Um, <laughs> you raced him, no. no you, <laughs> I, still, I still get it framed. Still get it framed. You once did that supermoto thing yeah. with like loads... Of, they, there was more GP riders there, yeah. wasn't there? And you blitzed everyone. Uh, yeah, I didn't blitz any, everyone, but yeah, I am 1-0 on Valentino. Get in. Get in. Who, who, who was there? Uh, Some top riders, wasn't Yeah, there? Dovi was there. Biaggi was there. Um, it, it was loads, loads yeah. and loads. I've just it, seen it a timesheet on like Facebook. Yeah, it's so cool. It's a really first, cool timesheet. And then like loads of MotoGP riders yeah. and like top like names. Yeah. Well, was that just a, like a one-off event or something? It like? was. Uh, it was actually a Simoncelli um, event. All right. So they did it. Like a memorial thing. Yeah, memorial thing. Um, actually, it got canned because uh, there was there was another incident at one of the events so it got canned because of it so it's flipping oh, it's a shame I, I know I'm supposed to be like really on the pulse like have, like doing the podcast every week and like talking about bike racing but I was down at North Yorkshire the other day and they were talking about the the minimum age in Moto3 being raised to 18 sometime soon mm-hmm. is that a fact? Yeah, I don't know if it's 18 but they're definitely raising it so that... to 16 and then 18 the following mm-hmm. year is that? and I think what they're trying to do is they've got to phase it in as well so actually I think they've got a problem in the midterm because what's happening is they're trying to rush kids in now early. Mm. So before the rule comes in, I think they're trying to rush them through. Oh, geez, so they're actually, I think they've actually it. made a bit more of a, you know, so if they've got these it's, younger kids, it's going to get worse. We're going to get better. It's going to get worse before it gets better. Right. If so, but the plan is to get to eighteen as a minimum age from from World Championship. I don't know exactly what it is, but there's definitely it's coming in. It's also coming in for Moto Three junior world championship which is the spanish championship but it's not it is called the junior world championship so they phase it in and that's going to have the same age i think that's going to be a slightly younger Christ. but you have basically i think they're going to make it like a stepping stone system mm-hmm. obviously this year we've had it it's been a bit rough in you know there's been a you know a few Fatal. bad accidents and fatalities mm-hmm. and stuff so and sadly i mean it's, it's all sad but you know they've involved really young people so it's uh, uh, that's a hard one to understand what's for the best or not you know yeah you get these super talents and by stopping it do you prevent these super talents um you know like acosta would have been i think wouldn't have been able to race in the new rules Mm -hmm. um even taking it out of our sport do you then have to do it in other sports you know like ken rocks and i would follow motocross and supercross he was world champion at 15 you know like if you can do that sort of thing then do you lack the same mental capacity? I don't know. Or not mental capacity, but the same experience so you don't have the same thought process of what is risky or not and risky. Is it is it an age problem or is it something else that's at, at cause, you know, for for these accidents? And, like, for example, if you do go down that rule oh, and, like, say, take the can't. minimum age to 18 and then we'll have... So they're all, like, 19, 20 and 21 and then we'll have a few more accidents where people get but, fatalities. I think... It, it, it's a very difficult but people, it's, people it's, have grown up a lot more by then yeah but it's so difficult isn't it because it depends if you still i don't know what the rules are exactly but if you if you're still racing and gaining the experience it's no point if you just say you're not allowed to race until a certain point because then you you're still as green as you would have been if you were you're 18 and green instead of 15 and green yeah, yeah. if you know what i mean mm-hmm. so that's a real difficult one and uh, you know <sighs> most accidents are freak accidents and i don't think that Personally, I don't think age had a great deal of yeah. influence on the ones that I've t- witnessed from afar. Racing's racing at any age. We, we, we have discussed this as well, but uh, I do feel the 300 class is unnecessarily dangerous because the bikes are so... Yeah, 100%. Um, so... Easy, easy to, to ride, ride <laughs> and therefore, and so similar. Yeah, it puts it then makes well, you've got to be dangerous. Yeah, you've got yeah. to be dangerous. I mean, I've I, to be competitive. And the most that I watched that three hundred class was actually when I did the commentary that you that you spoke about. And you know, there's there is three or four riders in that class that are much better than the rest, and they were always at the front of the field, but they could never break away from the riders that have probably got far less talent and are never going to be any good, really, you know, in real terms. Mm. And yet they're spending an entire race dicing with them, um, and they shouldn't be. Yeah, because of the slipstream. Yeah, so it, it's kind of it's kind of a stupid thing. So what we're essentially saying is we should put them on faster, harder-to-ride bikes, and that'll make it safer. 100%, yeah. A bit like the thought process of if the, fa- the safest way to make our sport safer is to make us all race with no helmets and then we'll go slower you know 
Yeah. It's the same as uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, the same it's counterintuitive, way. but yeah. Yes, no, counterintuitive, no, but uh-huh. it's so hard to find a way to fix the issue. Mm-hmm. I think. Yeah. And yeah, are we going to lose these wonder kids? Because now everyone's trying to do the wonder kid, aren't they? You know, like they're pushing everyone early, 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 early. championship. Yeah, yeah. yeah so totally we've got uh, obviously Pedro Costa wrapped up the Moto Three uh-huh. Championship. We've amazing, got... he Rem- was amazing. Yeah, he's, he's been unbelievable. <laughs> uh, do you know, talking about shoes to fill mm-hmm. is a, like a next superstar Moto GP. He's the only one that I can see that I think that kid's got something very special. What was what was super impressive with Pedro? I mean, Fudgia was really had a, a good go at him. Dennis Foggia was, was impressive as well. Um, <clears throat> but Pedro Acosta just does things with a Moto3 bike that you don't see, like spinning it up. Like The thing's got about four horsepower. Like How do you spin up a bike with yeah. so little horsepower? It wouldn't pull the skin off a rice pudding in real terms. Mm. And Imagine yet he's going to be like a Moto2. Yeah, yeah. You know, like he's... That, that's something else and and, it, and the way that he breaks is so deep and late um, and so that was what happened at the weekend Foggia had to had to beat him by a few places tried to outbreak the master of breaking, breaking. and took him both well took Acosta down and ran himself wide which was very frustrating because I had money on both of them right? <laughs> <laughs> have, you done, really well, have you done well with your gambling this year I did until the last couple of rounds and I got yeah. all like fluttery right. flutter happy <laughs> with people that had no chance whatsoever <laughs> Well, I'm up. I'm up. Oh, good. <laughs> Just and, the gambling addiction uh, strong. So. Remy Gardner, yep. Moto 2, very strong year. And uh, him and Raul Fernandez both stepping up into Moto GP as rookies. Get, list off the other rookies that are going to be in Moto GP next year. Uh, there's Fabio Di Antonio, who's come up from Moto 2. Well said, that man. Well <laughs> done. <laughs> there you are. Practiced well it. Good man. Uh, who's the, oh, Darren Binder. So that one, there is a bit of controversy mm. about him. A lot of controversy. Again, a um, bit like we spoke about, but when is too soon, too soon? Um, the only other rider, I think, ever that's gone from Moto3 to MotoGP is Jack Miller. So if you go off form and history, never didn't work out too badly. Mm. Um, but I think the, there's two sides to every argument. Um, and most people, from what I can word on the street, is that Darren isn't in the same situation as what Jack was. Darren's not had the best of seasons. Do you know when, when you think, <clears throat> how many people line up on the MotoGP grid? Yeah, 22, 20, 22, 24, 22. How many brothers is there? Uh, yeah, there's the Marquezes, the Aspargaros and the Binders. Rossi and his stepbrother. Rossi and his stepbrother, well, there was, yeah. And... So next year it would have been four sets of brothers. Oh, that's crazy, isn't it? Like mm-hmm. eight out of 22 are brothers. That's like... That's some good genes. <laughs> it is mad though, isn't it? <laughs> and I think... Wow. And, and I'm pretty sure ones have got brothers in the other classes as well. I, I will have. I, I can't think of anyone off the top of my head, mm-hmm. but yeah, it's very, it's a very. Um... Yeah, that is actually that's that's a lot, isn't it? Mm. And as a percentage of the entry, and I'm not too sure. If Chris, it's you need to find the right system. I'm not too that's sure if it's genes or if it's opportunity as well. Like I think a, a lot of it can be like so. Like for example, Mark Marquez is say winning when he started winning Spanish championships and getting like good teams in MotoGP. His brother then always has the best opportunities and the best rides and stuff I mean, to come through. Funny you should say it. But at the moment, they've got that situation with Ralph Fernandez. So Ralph Fernandez has stepped up into MotoGP with KTM. So Ralph Fernandez in Moto2 this year was the... He's actually beaten Mark Marquez's um, statistic of the most wins in a rookie season. So even though he didn't win the title, which Marquez did Mm -hmm. in his first season of Moto2... Ralph Fernandez had more wins than Mark Marquez did. Uh, did he not win it? I don't think Mark did in his first year because he did his second year. And when ah, it did, right. His first year, did he not have the eyesight problem? That might have been it then. Yeah. <clears throat> but the first, so Fernandez has had more wins than what Mark had in his first year, um, and <clears throat> so he stepped up to MotoGP. So he actually started a, a really knee-jerk reaction from everyone because they realised that Fernandez was super fast. Mm. So they signed him up really, really early, and then had to promote Gardner as well. So that meant that. Lequona and Petrucci had to leave before they thought that it was their time. Petrucci is now going to do the Paris Dakar, which is quite yeah, an interesting thing. Yeah, yeah. Really interesting. That's cool. What a nice fella he is. Mm. Don't really know him, but he seems a nice fella from the outside. Doesn't cry and stuff, doesn't he? He's, yeah. like, he's really nice. He did he a great. Just, he does do you know cry. when he won that, won that race and he was like crying and oh, said stuff about honestly. his mum and yeah. that, it was mint. And then on the actually, if he at the grid interview, he was he was in tears and he was just. It's funny. He's just so grateful for life it's just you know really nice to see um <clears throat> and then Lecuona, who has been actually really really impressive had a terrible start to the year and now he's signed for honda in world superbikes so that'll be a good mm. a good move um but yeah for brothers ralph fernandez has got a brother 
uh, Adrian Fernandez, I think it is, who races Moto3 and has really struggled in his rookie season, which I think most of them do because it's a hard championship. Um, but he's <clears throat> he's now got the KTM, factory KTM for next year. So he's sort of, a bit like you were saying, maybe Alex got a few better deals because of Mark. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> it seems like um, Ralph Fernandez, his brother, has got a nice little... yeah. Well, Not a take, free ticket, but a if, if you take uh, someone if you knows. Here, if yeah. you take Rossi Stepbrother, for example, <clears> like there's um, if you think of how many people in the world have had the same opportunity to get to MotoGP, yeah. well, and and Luca Marini, I remember Luca Marini when he came into it, and he was a full blown back marker the first season in Moto Two, mm-hmm. like full blown back marker. Mm-hmm. But you know, fair play is fast as now, but you know what I mean. It, yeah, you, you're true that. Had that been someone else, maybe wouldn't have got the second season and therefore yeah. not had the opportunity to continue to develop. Mm. So it's an interesting one, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if it's um, fast seeds or whether it is... Um, fast seeds. <laughs> or whether it's opportunity. The, but there's the title for the episode there, Astrid. <laughs> <laughs> Hidden's fast seeds. <laughs> And all of your titles seem to have some sort of innuendo going on. Like when it's you, not even me. Back. I don't even do innuendo. <laughs> Anyway, so that uh, anything so that's more? MotoGP. Yeah, wraps up MotoGP. <laughs> Obviously, whoever. Oh, and Rossi, by the way, uh, I was that was the only thing I was disappointed at. You know, like Rossi's known for his um, celebrations. Celebrations. Yeah, the it was it. really just pulled in. Yeah. 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 Cheers. Thank you very much. It's odd. Mm. Expecting like a firework to go off of, of, of his ass or something. No, but you know, like he's he, it's one of the things he's known for, isn't it? All the you is. know the the cool celebrations that he did mm-hmm. back in the day. More obviously because he could. I mean, he was winning that much that he'd had them planned. You know, like it gets to a point where you, you know maybe we're not going to win this weekend, so he didn't have one planned. But he knew he was going to retire. It was kind of odd. He sort of shook everyone's hand and cuddled everyone, and then mm. went yeah. in the garage and. Was jumped around, sort of, yeah, sort of. Was being upset. It's sort of well, classy, well, though. In, in a sense, he maybe thought of himself like it's other people, like sort of Quattararo's time and this yeah, time, and, and like sort of yeah. didn't want Not to take, take the limelight, limelight. away yeah, from yeah, the true. new generation. So yeah, could sort true. of see it as classy. But and he did uh, sign off with the top ten, which is very impressive. Yeah, you know, he was yeah. within I don't know ten seconds of the win in his last race in the dry, or you know, whatever it is. It was phenomenal, you, you, impressive as. So you definitely wouldn't want to be in front or behind Rossi at that situation <laughs> because, quite frankly. You don't want to get in his way if he's going to make a move, and then you don't want to be the guy behind him trying to make a move on Rossi and take him out in his final. Can race you imagine taking like, him down? Imagine it. You just <laughs> you, you you there wouldn't be a place to hide, would there? That just there wouldn't be. So it was it was a, it was a nice big gap for him out, and I thought, yeah, let's just ride out the storm here. You know what I mean? Part of me was hoping everyone would just pull over and let him win. Well, the last so did race. I, because talking of betting, I did put a couple of quid on. Literally two quid. Yeah. I, I did have a stinky suspicion that they were going to give him some, like, mega tyres. Yeah, he, well, he was 150 to 1, and I thought, well, if they pull over... Imagine it. Do you know what I mean? Imagine. There was talk of it. I bet, was imagine it. it. Yeah, there was talk of it. I didn't I didn't think it was going to happen, but... For yeah, because the championship had been decided yeah. as well. <clears throat> and if everyone else stayed in the same positions, mm-hmm. it would have been... Yeah, she let him through. Yeah, that would have been... It's on two yeah. quid down. <laughs> Uh, cheers Dora <laughs> straight off the bat there we go so yeah um, really it's a case of, yet again thank you for coming on the show I must get this in before I leave thank you so much to Tina Hill who always listens to all the shows um, so she's been in touch and can't thank her enough really cannot any other plugs from you lads I've got a quick plug thank you to oh, uh, Greenfields for my new t-shirt I've uh, went down to uh, you know the Greenfield flat track down mm-hmm. I've seen a few, few pictures of a few people Have down you? there have you been? No, I've not been there, no. I bet you're good at it. But I, I tell you what, everyone does say you must see Chrissy in a sumo. I think it, I would love similar, to see that one. Similar day. discipline, isn't it? Similar, but I've had a go at flat track and I was pretty pony. Really? Yeah. Oh. Nah, not for long. I tell you what, give, give, uh, come on, you're a competitive lad. You I am competitive, but I, 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 did, um, I did an event called the Super Presidio a couple of years. You lucky... So- yeah. look, that's on my bucket list. Yeah, which, was a, which was a short track event with, you know, Marquez and... All them boys. How do you get invited? You have to be fast. I don't know how I got invited, actually. I from think I just fluked into it. Yeah, from the Supermoto days. Um, struggled. Yeah, really struggled. 
Really, mm. I was in the last chance qualifier and I actually wiped Alex Rins out big time because it was either him or me and it was neither of us in the end. <laughs> My God. I was I was straight behind with with half a straight to go. <laughs> I figured I'm gonna have a go at this. Good I didn't lad. shot off into the last corner. That's Proper good. hit him like T bone him big time. You're in Spain. I just took out Alex Rins. That has got to be on YouTube somewhere, is it? <laughs> it probably is. We'll somewhere. have to dig deep into that one. It so, was bad. I tell you, I, you're going to the NEC, lads. Any any? I think so. Uh, I'm looking to go final weekend. <laughs> On this, I'm at a wedding on the Saturday, but I'm planning on going Yours? on the Sunday. Uh, wedding? Mm. No, no. Uh, different. No, no. Yeah. Well, there's a BSB day, isn't there? I think it's the 10th. Is that the last? It's either usually the last know. Saturday or the last Sunday. Usually they do BSB and then a roads. I've got 10th in my head. I there's might no be wrong. word of the roads. Uh, roads haven't happened, have they, this year? So Looking ahead for next year. Yeah, I think I be... They haven't actually talked about it, though. I was on the phone to Paul Wheatley, NGK. There you go. Um, he was saying they actually haven't announced anything regarding the roads. Right. I read something about the Isle of Wight thing falling on Rocky. Oh, for fuck's sake. I don't know what's going on with that mm. at all. I have no idea. But like you say, it's we haven't heard anything, so balls. Until we hear something, then we can report on it. Well, I'll be down the NEC on the BSB day, whenever that is. Mm. I think it's somewhere around the 10th, but don't exactly quote me on it. There we go. Because <laughs> I might not be there. <laughs> and yeah, uh, Are you going down as well? Well, so. I'm definitely not going because um, I'm doing the Winter Series, Motocross at uh, Dunbar, Ecro... There's an event called anyway. I'll have to put it online or something like that. But there's this winter series, but it's not, it's not flat track. I always get this wrong. So it's motocross flat track. So there's no jumps. It's mm-hmm. a motocross track with no jumps, and I'm off to do that. So I think there's four rounds of that. Oh, is it in like um, Barley Stubblefield type racing? Aye. There's one on this. I mean, like yeah, it. there's one at uh, one at Pickering this weekend mm. uh, with the uh, the Pe- oh, Pickering District Motocross Club, whatever. And but then this one's up at Dunbar, Scotland, so uh, like Sundays only. So uh, I'll be going up there with Sugar Tits. Do you remember Sugar Tits? Yeah. Thank God he'll be loving that. He'll be listening to this, jumping on the spot. So yeah, going up with Sugar Tits and Little Cube there. I'm actually, and... I'm actually going to Sugar Tits' house now. We're going to pick up a little mini motocross bike. It never it's at, at uh, Greenfields, they've got a flat track, but they've also got a mini motocross track and a mini mini bike super super cross track as well. So is that what you're going riding? Uh, yeah. So the, um, I think the motocross tracks open like through the day, and then the flat tracks open two thirty till seven thirty, like under the floodlights mm-hmm. tomorrow. So I'm heading down there in the morning. Mega. So yeah, we're getting as much riding in as I can. I've seen these hands all blistered. Is it on, up. Is it on for two th- from two thirty onwards? Two thirty or seven thirty under the floodlights. <clears throat> Are you going to try make that? <laughs> Finish work early, <laughs> right? Well, uh, do, you, do you know why I'm going to work tomorrow? Right, to Mickley, money? do you know why Mickley oh, on where? the way up? Right, there's a there's a, a first school on the right hand side. They've got a kid in the school who's allergic to nuts, and they're asking me to take down a hundred year old walnut tree. <sighs> Bear in mind they're encased in like a cut. You, can, you can't get into them. The actual get the nut. You really can't. You have to. Can't they just take, tell him to stay away from the well, walnut tree? No, but Mick, the, the, you would. He would. It would. It's essentially suicide. If that kid tried to eat that nut, that would have been the effort he would have gone to to get the actual nut out of the walnut. Would have been beyond. And I'm the, the head mas- uh, head teacher. Has gone. We have to take the tree off. Oh. How many kids with nut allergies have passed through that school in a hundred years? And I've got to go. Well, to they're the all dead off. now, so. Well, pff, apparently not. But this is the first one. It, the world's gone bloody up the left, man, hasn't it? Anyway, that's my little rant not, over. Sorry. Not, alle- not allergies are actually on the rise over like the last hundred years, and it's because um, in midwives advise people not to eat nuts when so they don't pregnant. build up to what's it? So they don't build up immunity. So therefore, if you don't, if your man doesn't eat nuts when you when you're in the. <laughs> We've got our title. We've got our title. Yeah. We've got our title. <laughs> How did you come back when well, my mum was eating nuts? Yeah. So yeah, if, fast need if, fa- fast seeds come from good nuts. So you know what can we say? Yeah. <laughs> if your mum doesn't eat nuts anyway through through your pregnancy, you're more likely to have a nut nut uh, allergy, and therefore it makes I mean, sense. People, uh, people, look, there's uh, sometimes when you go on flights, you can't even actually have a packet of nuts. Yeah, my oh, gets my, my cousins are the same. Yeah. My cousin's got a severe nut allergy. So yeah, mm. uh, it's because his mum <clears> didn't eat nuts when she was pregnant. Yeah. So yeah, you have to you have to if she goes on a plane, they have to tell everyone, and they're not allowed to have them. Whatever it is, mm. proper. Jeez, yeah, it goes in the air but, conditioning. Uh-huh. And, yeah, it's well, proper I bet severe. She shit herself when she sees a walnut tree, though. No problem. Exactly. Uh, there you go. Go to a different world's school. Gone. <laughs>
Touche. <laughs> anyway, so we've been trying to wrap this up for ages now. This, <laughs> this is your problem. You're just too easy to talk to. You're a Eurosport sport presenter. You. Have a great Christmas. I hope Jesus, um, everything gets... I'll be back yet. before don't, then. Don't yeah. say, I know he's on, he's on bloody commission. I get paid next it? time. That's exactly it. Have a great, um, yeah, a couple of months looking for the fitness challenge in uh, in January, in the new year. And uh, yeah, we'll we'll uh, keep, keep it in touch and I'm sure we'll be like out doing something soon. Wait, I defo. Oh, you do on the motocross bike soon. But uh, yeah. massive thank you to all of our patrons and to our sponsor, Colchester Kawasaki. And look forward to catching up soon. Thanks very much. See you in a bit. Later. Click, buy, deliver. With remote purchasing from the two time motorcycle news dealer of the year, Colchester Kawasaki. Proud sponsors of Chasing the Racing.